All right, uh, dear viewers, uh, welcome, welcome to uh, Dina's coverage of the Halto Open. I hope you can hear me and see me just fine. I will be your host for uh, today's um, round two. I'm Latvian Gramster at Nations. Dina at the moment is setting up the camera ready for the tournament hall. I'm going to switch to it uh, in a second. But first and foremost, I would like to welcome all of you. We are streaming right now on three channels. That is uh, Dina's Twitch channel, Dina's YouTube channel. So hello, everybody. And also my own Twitch channel, uh, followed by GM Nations. All right. Now, this is the angle that uh, we are getting from the uh, tournament venue. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just as I started the coverage, um, uh, the opponent of Dina requested that we change the angle. <laughs> so he didn't really want to be in the screen, which is completely understandable. So we changed it slightly. Now you are going to see the view on Dina a bit better. Uh, I am still able of course to adjust uh, where I'm gonna position the uh, chessboard and my camera maybe my own camera is not really that important but still okay you can see me I'm streaming from Riga the capital city of Latvia uh, it's a seven hour difference uh, between Latvia and Charlotte so the game is about to start and I'm sure that all of you were following uh, round one of the Alto Open. Dina is uh, doing well. Yeah, so uh, she had this uh, crazy up and down game in round one against a uh, low rated opponent. I think that uh, uh, not enough sleep was to blame, but in the end, she managed to win the game. Win the game. So right now, she is getting ready for round two um yeah so in round two her opponent is um uh, matthew uh, i think i probably should also uh show you the pairings matthew summons so while the game is um uh, uh still in the starting uh stage let's have a look at the pairings so this is auto open held in charlotte united states and I'm sure all of you already know that uh, Rina is now half American, spending a lot of time in the US, making a lot of amazing content. So the top seeded in the tournament is Caden Trough. By the way, very interesting Grandmaster. Haven't seen from him for a long time. He's here. Also Levin Brigadze, uh, Alonso Zapata, and Dina is at the moment fourth place. Also, you see quite a famous content creator, James Ganty, is number five uh, this is the tournament website uh, again tournaments organized by charlotte chess center the prize fund is six thousand uh, dollars uh, the tournament venue is hilton garden inn never been myself in charlotte but i imagine it's really nice there the time control is pretty odd one hour and 15 minutes per player with a 10 second increment and one thousand dollars for the winner that's it five rounds only this is round number two ah by the way also i probably should have uh, mentioned the tournament schedule um yeah i should have probably done that there's the schedule so this is round two as you see today is a double round robin du double round day uh round number three is going to start later so it's going to be quite difficult and uh, then the tournament is going to resume tomorrow. So it's a three-day tournament, only five rounds. All right. So, oh, oh my goodness. This is a bad angle of mine. How did I do this? We can't see Dina. Just a second. I think I need to adjust this because <laughs> when I did it before, it was better. All right. I'm going to adjust this. Of course, we want to see Dina in action. Ah, I'm not sure where to put the board. Yeah, maybe like this. All right, so that we see, uh, see Dina all the time. Perfectly. All right, I think this is a good angle. And uh, Karakan. So the game has started, and whoever said this, it was, I think, Jack. 
in YouTube channel say that uh, Karakan is a uh, good chance it might it might happen so Karakan is on the board and there is a small delay of the moves I think I can physically make those moves e4 c6 d4 d5 there's a 10 minute delay this is the current position the angle is pretty obvious and um, Matthew plays e5 um yeah, so e5 is um, a very interesting move, very trendy move, and uh, I think right now Dina is trying to remember. She is uh, possibly surprised. Yeah, I know this face too well. I'm also just professional myself, so maybe she didn't really expect that Matthew is going to play e5. And uh, normally, data players, they prepare using uh, chess base, professional software, and um, yeah, I don't really know. Maybe she was expecting e takes on e5, exchange Karakan, or knight c3. And now you see, I mean, she is not half asleep. No, no, she is trying to remember what was her preparation after e5. And there's two major choices. There's a c5 move and there's bishop f5. And now she has to make this choice. I mean, g6 is a subpar continuation. I would say bishop f5 is the classical combination and a6. Wow. a6. Now oh, that's a surprise. So she's trying to surprise the opponent. All right. So this feels like a Chebanenko system from the Slav. Sometimes this a6 is a move they played there. That's a move I didn't expect. By the way, I see you mentioned the chat. Uh, does Dina right now live in Charlotte? I think so. I think so. Probably somebody from the chat can um, add more details. Uh, she regularly uh, plays in um, US Opens. I think she lives there for the moment. I, I don't really know for sure. Uh, I think it's a loss for us Europeans at the moment. <laughs> and uh yeah i presume i presume she lives there now for the moment and uh there was also a mention in the twitch chat that uh charlotte i think it was in the twitch chat that charlotte chess center has become um a major chess center of us chess right now i think so i think so you know um i've never been in charlotte myself i'm myself an active chess grandmaster um the only time i've been in us was i mean chess just related was in 2019 when i visited uh, st louis chess club and also uh las vegas but i think charlotte chess club is something where i would definitely want to go this would be my next stop because they're making some amazing events also um danya is uh one of the head coaches in charlotte chess center daniel norditsky obviously so there the chess in charlotte is booming and i think it's a, a good a good place for dina to be um yeah all right so i will um i will try to obviously follow all of your input all of your questions insights on all the uh chats in case I miss a question, so pardon me. So I have all the chat windows open. I see what you're saying there on YouTube. Hello. <laughs> Dina is the green, green hornet. Right. I'm also following uh, uh, Twitch's channel. Um, yeah, Bortnik. Alexander Bortnik is also there in Charlotte. Yeah, this I know. I think Bortnik actually, he was a coach in Miami, was he not? Or Florida? Uh, Florida. Uh, Florida is Miami, I guess right so alto is a yearly tournament right yeah there's a lot of a lot of tough players although although um the leading shadow players are not playing here this is what i mentioned in the very beginning uh they have decided not to participate could be a number of reasons why but still there's one gramster at least one Kevin Trough and was it also Zapata, a Grandmaster? I think so. So there are Grandmasters in the tournament. And obviously Dina herself. 
Bishop d3. Okay. All right. I mean, if you go back to the actual position, and uh, if I would have to guess why Dina played a6, I think she's just trying to surprise the opponent because um, the way I could at least understand her body language is that she didn't really expect e5. And again, the main moves is bishop f5, would follow by e6 or c5, knight c6. But a6, she just tried to divert to something. And I'm not sure what really changes, but the big idea is that after c5, there is no bishop b5 checks. Yeah, so it's a bit mysterious move to me. Bishop d3 makes sense because the bishop in f5 um, can now not be placed. And if black plays e6, then black is suffering because of this bishop on uh, c8. And now Dina played very quickly c5, c3. And I think we are going to get some sort of uh, French defense possession. So a typical French defense position would be, let's say, black plays knight c6, attacking the pawn on d4. And if white plays knight f3, black wants to play bishop g4, activate the bishop, but let's say white defends the pawn on d4, black plays e6, and now you see this bishop on c8 no longer is the bad bishop. And uh, there's some serious pressure against the pawn on d4. All right. So, uh, once again, there's a delay of the moves, 10 minutes. So the most I'm showing you right now, this is not yet broadcasted. Uh, the delay is usually done due to fair play reasons. Unfortunately, in uh, chess uh, history, there have been occasions when uh, some of the players have used illegal assistance. It's very easy nowadays. I mean, if you have access to a phone, you could possibly hide it somewhere and then go consult with an engine and this phone it can beat the world champion it can beat magnus carlsen they're so advanced so that's why obviously it's clearly prohibited to use any phones during the game they should be switched off put away and uh, also the reason why the games are delayed so that let's say in case somebody finds an access to the phone and the broadcast of the game there's a delay so the chances that he can get the actual position are lower. I have my I have a phone myself here because uh, I'm from Riga. I'm not playing. I'm allowed to have the phone here. Um, Adina, why Adina looks so stressed? I think she doesn't look stressed. I think Dina in general is tired because, I mean, she's a Terminator. You know, you wouldn't believe um, the energy, the input, how much energy she, she inputs in, in the content. So we are still uh, discussing this coverage. Uh, when Dina, Dina was supposed to sleep, I think it was something like uh, 1 a.m., 1 a.m. Charlotte time. She was still awake. And we were talking about uh, stuff we are going to do today. And uh, I think she slept something like six, seven hours. And she's up again, up and running, doing content. And while she was asleep, her YouTube channel, I believe, published a couple of shorts. <laughs> so it's unbelievable. How do I know D Dina? Well, we started to stream approximately about the same time. But uh, she has taken streaming and content creating much more seriously than I am. And uh, she is by far a more accomplished content creator. Uh, we did together some collaborations. Um, so when we were starting out, we also met in real life, which was uh, two years ago. Uh, um, uh, she decided to join uh, French team chess championships in Shatter. She came over to Shatter and uh, we made some content together. Yeah, we played some table tennis, we played some blitz. I even attempted to challenge Dina for some handicap games. I think I had something like either 30 seconds on the clock or one minute on the clock. She got three and uh, I tried to beat her. She punished me mercilessly. She's a very strong player, obviously. <laughs> 
just because she told me that MVL was able to do it. I mean, MVL was able to beat her, I think, with something like 30 seconds on the clock. And I thought, okay, I'm not worse. Well, I guess I'm worse. My own rating is about 2600. I've been in top 100 in the world, both Rapid and Blitz. Uh, classical, not quite. So now it's 2575 ELO. So I'm number one Latvian Grandmaster. I know Dina quite well. And um, yeah, it's been quite a while since we had a proper collaboration. So I'm very excited that we can do this. All right, so now after knight c6, the opponent is thinking. I would assume that he's uh, thinking about choices d takes on c5, but I mean, this doesn't look very good. So after d takes on c5, uh, knight takes on e5. Why? Well, this is not good because Dina is obviously well trained, well experienced, a very expensive player, and she knows that having this strong pawn center is far more important than this double pawn on c5 and that's why also i think that matthew here is not going to take i'm sorry i think i lost a couple of moves here shouldn't have refreshed so matthew is not going to take on c5 and he's going to do something else could we possibly flip the board yes 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 that's my mistake this is my mistake just a second you you could and you should yes this is a fair suggestion <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there was a suggestion to flip the board. All right, I forgot to do this. All right, of course, of course, we should check this from the black perspective. Um, Dina's opponent's rating is uh, 18 congrat. You know, but these ratings, they're really tricky and uh, I'm sure you already see the title uh, that Dina's channel runs both on Twitch and YouTube, and it is no more underrated American kids. And this is, you know, tricky moment because 1800, it seems that, I mean, Dina's rating is, what is it? 2180, this is ELO rating versus 1800. So she should be a big favorite. But you know, nowadays, you never know. You never know. Because we don't know anything about uh, her opponent, Matthew. Maybe the guy has studied a lot of chessable courses. And with the nowadays the informational access, some of the low rated opponents sometimes have a better opening knowledge than even certain drumsters. So it, it doesn't mean anything yet. Dina is definitely a favorite. She had a rough start. And uh, yeah, I think after 92, this is a smart move from um, White's perspective. Uh, the idea is to meet Bishop G4 at some point with something like F3. So for example, if Dina is going to play here Bishop G4 with the idea to get to some French positions, I think she needs to be careful not to miss F3, Bishop H5, and this is a very typical pawn sack by C6. I'm sure Dina sees this. And now the point is after F takes on E6, there could be problems to develop the kingside pieces. So maybe knight f4, hitting the bishop here, bishop f7, and yeah, I don't know. So this idea sometimes is present, maybe even f4 sometimes to fix this pawn here, but then f4 again, it drops the pawn on d4, probably not here, takes, takes, knight e4, and yeah, I guess black is simply up too many pieces, too many pawns. Otherwise, black has some issues, you see, with these pieces. So this is a very common pawn sacrifice. So Dina is a grandmaster, and uh, she's going to definitely spend some time here before she's going to play bishop g4. But knight e2 is a smart move. Why does uh, why did not play knight e2 on knight f3? Imran is asking on YouTube channel because of bishop g4. That's the reason. All right. Why does it say 2000 rating on the board? Um, there could be 
there could be, by the way, some differences between US ratings and uh, FIDE ratings. I think on the official website, they use US ratings. They have a different rating system. And I have noticed that in general, the US ratings have 100 points more than FIDE ratings in general. So I think also uh, Dina's uh, US rating is uh 2280 her fide rating is slightly lower but she has lost a bunch of points obviously she is much stronger than that but being a content creator sometimes takes its toll so i'm sure that uh, she could easily get back to 2300 if she would focus only on playing and not creating content So Jack Gleason on YouTube says the whole reason the USA and other countries have their own rating system is that so they have so that they don't have to play FIDE. I am not sure that is true. Um, we used to have our own national rating in Latvia, but it was not because we uh, Latvia didn't want to pay FIDE. It was just a tradition um throughout the years and it, it was abolished at some point and now we no longer have it i i don't really know about us somebody i mean could correct me right now dina is gone so yeah i have also my own chat here yeah welcome everybody I'll try to follow all the three chats. So I have like three windows open. Hopefully I'm not going to miss a thing. Dina is missing. Probably this is some coffee pause. Uh, the time control, as I already said, is uh, one hour and 50 minutes plus 10 seconds. Now, this is really weird. Uh, yeah, I guess it's an American thing because here in Europe, uh, most of the open tournaments, they have 90 minutes, uh, not not 110. And uh, a typical increment is 30 seconds, not 10. But okay, I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting mix of uh, classical and rapid. Yeah, so. Uh, so it starts like a classical tournament, and then when there's going to be a time scramble, it's going to be a rapid tournament, <laughs> a rapid uh, game. So there's a mention on Dina's Twitch channel. Why do I have so many trophies in my background? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are my trophies. All of them that I have accumulated uh, throughout my career. I mean, mainly just to make a very good impression. <laughs> what do you think? Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep them in my background. What do you think? Not in the basement. <laughs> so that you can look at them. Yeah, so uh, Dina is missing. I don't know where she is. You know, usually the reason is um, pretty uh, weird. There could be a queue at the coffee bar, which uh, yeah, reminds me of some very nice stories of how I was playing in uh, Las Vegas and getting coffee during the games. Maybe I'm going to tell you a bit later. Not much yet to, um, not much yet, uh, yet to say about the actual position. Uh, I, I think that Dina doesn't even know that it's her move. She's probably standing somewhere in a queue. Um, all right. Alternative choices. Maybe she can also play something like G6 or try to get a bishop on a five. C4 is never going to happen. So you want to keep some tension on the center. Maybe queen B6 looks interesting. But I'm sure she's going to spend some time on bishop G4 here.
<laughs> She's just messing with his head. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So for your um, information, I have decided to keep on the evaluation bar. So you see this um, little thing to the left of the chessboard. This is the bar. And it gives you some indication who is doing better. Uh, so if the bar is at the middle, it means the position is equal. If the white bar is obviously slightly greater than the black bar, it means that white is slightly better. But to be honest, in the very beginning, it doesn't mean much. So just slightly over the middle, it doesn't mean much. All right. Well, where is she? Senti says that the reason the rating is different on chess.com live board is that the info is of a different Matthew Simmons. What? Really? So there's two Matthew Simmonses and chess.com has got a wrong info. Wow. So Matthew Simmons, so thank you, Senti, for the command. So Matthew Simmons has 1800 USCF rated, rating and 1720 FIDE. So there is more than one. Oh my goodness. Imagine this if Dina prepared against the wrong Matthew Simmons. Imagine this. I mean, I could easily imagine this. So she opened Chesspace, this software, and she prepared against the other Matthew Simmons. And now she's playing against this guy. And he plays E5, and Dina's like, you are not supposed to play like that. I mean, this could be, this could be the case. Or B chess right there. All right. Okay, she's back with refreshments. She's totally chill. Rides down the move. Also, we are going to have a short interview with Dina after the game. Obviously. So you'll have chances to ask any questions. Say hello. All right. I think she's going to treat Bishop G4 as the principal choice. So let's try to have a look at some of the lines. All right. Is this so obvious? So let's say Bishop G4. She's definitely looking at Bishop G4. She wants to play Bishop G4. So the idea is to play e6. If she gets that, she's happy. So right now she's looking at f3. f3, bishop h5. If she gets to play e6, she's happy. Now let's try to make black suffer with maybe not e6, but knight f4. Knight f4, the bishop is under attack. You play bishop g6. White could take it. And oh, this looks so painful. So perhaps there's even no need for white to sacrifice the pawn. All right, so after bishop g4, f3, if bishop h5 is not the move, she cannot do this. She could, of course, play bishop d7. Sometimes this idea exists in some Karakam lines, but here, I'm not sure. I think if I could show you there's a different line when bishop d7 actually is a move, I'm going to go back now from the very beginning. In the exchange care conversation, there is such a line. What was it? Bishop d3, knight c6, uh, c3, queen c7, knight e2, bishop g4, and there's this old move of 3 which used to be quite a thing some time ago. 
And now there is indeed this idea to play bishop d7 because black wants to play e5, bishop d6, stuff like that. And in the long run, this long diagonal is weakened. I don't really know if this is applicable for this position. So once again, what we got, dun, 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 here, 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 a6, here, c5, c3, knight c6, knight e2. Let's say she plays bishop g4. Is this really a weakness? I'm not sure. So bishop d7 could be a move. White is going to play a 4 anyway. e6. And I think the big question here is, is Dina a fan of the French defense? I mean, she lives in France and she speaks French. Je parle français. But does she really like the French setup? I don't know. All right. So instead of bishop g4. Yeah, instead of bishop g6, uh, Trigger Cappy also says that uh, she could consider bishop g6, uh, e6 right away. You're absolutely correct. Yes, and I have a feeling she has to do something else. She plays g6. The idea, I guess, is to play bishop f5. This is also a common idea in some Karakan like positions. Uh, white has uh, some ways to meet it. You know, actually, it's very interesting because white could also allow bishop f5 to happen. And for example, white could just play shoot castle. Let's say black plays bishop f5, take it, g takes in f5. By the way, e6 is still there. Now, let's not completely rule this out. e6, f takes on e6 and knight f4. There could be big problems so maybe not bishop f5 immediately maybe bishop g7 or knight h6 with the idea to play bishop f5 i mean white is definitely slightly better you know i'm not gonna deny white is slightly better but it doesn't mean much at this point there's still plenty of ways to go wrong. And uh, I guess we are going to see. Yeah, I, I, I love the funny chat, really. <laughs> yeah, hello to you too, of course. So. So what are you discussing there? A3? No, A3 doesn't really make any sense here. I think Short Castle probably is going to follow. Hmm. And uh, Dina is obviously a big fan of Carol. I mean, I see Georg in YouTube, on YouTube channel says that this is a bad line. Oh, uh, well maybe you know in general i think that these lines with c6 d4 here here g6 they're slightly passive yeah they're slightly passive because the pawn on e5 is not really contested white has some space advantage and after bishop g7 this bishop is staring at the pawn on e5 so it feels quite similar Oh, sorry, I think it was g6. You would play e6. I mean, maybe black is still going to play e6 at some point. A domgent in my chat suggests that h4 could be a move for white. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, yeah. H4, this is an interesting continuation. I mean, you want to play H5, you want to punish Black for the chosen approach, and uh, if uh, Black plays H5 to stop it, maybe you get access to some interesting complications. How about even something like Knight F4? Again, this E6 could be there. And this could lead to some very interesting complications, like takes, takes, Knight E4, Bishop g6. What on earth is this? I see the bar is laughing at me. Uh, I guess I'm missing. Oh, wait, I think I'm missing 9g6. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so 9g6 is a very cute move. Not bishop g6, but 9g6. The point is, after bishop takes on g6, that's a check, and the knight on d4 falls. The rook on h8 is under attack, and this leaves black's position in ruins. So, yeah, I agree. h4 looks very interesting. The question is, is Matthew going to do this? I don't think that he even suspects that his position is so good. We'll see. You know, speaking about the ratings, um, this is what I said at the very beginning. Uh, nowadays, with so much information available online, there are many club-level players who know their openings, sometimes even better than chess professionals. This is, this is normal. But what I believe is that in the long run, the class difference is there. So you can be a very good opening specialist, but in the long run, the more experienced, the stronger player is going to trick you anyway. Assuming that this big difference in opening in terms of the valuation is possible to overcome. By the way, after h4, you still need to calculate what happens after bishop f5. La Padla <laughs> is asking where I'm from. I'm from Latvia. Bishop f5 takes it e6. Is this so obvious? Again, the point is f takes on e6, knight f4. But what if black decides not to take? And black plays something like, I don't know, knight f6? Takes king f7? Is this obvious? It's not obvious. So again, h4 is leading to very interesting complications. Maybe just castle. Good opening wins games. There is a suggestion in the chat. Not always. Karakan is very tricky. Now, I've been thinking about playing the Karakan defense myself. But somehow, haven't got around. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't see where Dina has gone. Stick to the Dutch, yeah. <laughs> this was indeed the Karakan advanced. Yes, so there's a um, mention uh, on the Twitch channel. Yes, yes, this is Karakan advanced, E5, and Dina tried to divert very quickly. I mean, her opponent doesn't look very happy. Does he know? I mean, don't forget, this is Saturday morning. And not everybody is well rested after a tough Friday. Yeah, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. games can be very tough. You know, when I play in open tournaments, at least... This is the rule for Sundays. I have a rule. 
never blunder anything in the first hour. So if I don't blunder in the first hour, I'm doing okay. Uh, Auto Proto, hope I spelled that correctly. On Twitch is asking, does Dina have another game today? Yes, she does. So maybe let's go once again, look at the schedule. This is the schedule today. This is round two. You see, so the game started at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. There's another round, round three today at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, then tomorrow the tournament resumes with rounds four and five. And I will be tomorrow as well. So for the first round. You know, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking obviously to do the coverage for the entire tournament. But uh, yeah, I, I had to then make a big personal sacrifice. Because for me, for example, to do a coverage on Friday, I would have to start the coverage at uh, 3 a.m. <laughs> so I, I'm not done yet. Yeah, so it's very difficult for me to do coverage during the night. Yeah. 4 p.m. is already a deep night in European Union. All right. H. Whoa. H3. H3. Now, this is a move I think Dina is very happy to see. I don't like this move. Obviously, White doesn't like Bishop G4. But I don't like this. I mean, if White had asked the question, why did Dina play G6? She played it to be able to play bishop f5 and h3 in this regard feels like a waste of time. So right now, if I'm Dina, I'm definitely considering bishop f5 immediately. And after takes, takes, the question is once again, if white can play e6. And whatever happens now. I mean, this could be still quite crazy, like f takes. Knight goes here, queen d6, queen h5, king d7, normal. d takes on c5, okay, what on earth is this? I have no idea. Of course, I see the bar, that the bar hates this position for black. Not sure why, really. Maybe knight f4. Here and some sort of a queen h5 with knight e6 could be unpleasant. We'll see. But bishop f5 is definitely a move here. Sometimes in the Karakan, black plays knight h6 and then plays bishop f5. Or maybe she's just going to ignore it and play bishop g7. But you know, the problem is the knight. Because, for example, if Dina plays bishop g7, she's too good. Just to play the next move and not think further. At a bishop g7 should cost. The question is, where do you put the knight? Maybe knight h6. Actually, it could be knight h6. Because if you now play e6 and knight e7, then this entire idea looks just outright weird. The bishop on c8 is terrible. The dark squares have been weakened. So I don't think that Dina is going to play e6. There's a fair chance she's going to play bishop g7, knight h6. And try to play f6 at some point. Pushing pawns in front of your king is usually questionable, especially when you likely will be castling on that side, says Claude Dodson on um, Dina's Twitch channel. Well... It's uh, not really so simple. You know, at the very beginning, when you start to learn chess, what do your chess coaches tell you? They tell you quite basic things. They tell you what you're supposed to do in the opening. You should develop your pieces. You should fight for the center. You should castle short or long. 
you should have a plan. Yes, that is for the very beginning. And as soon as you become more advanced player, you start to understand and your coach starts to teach you more advanced things is that sometimes, and actually quite a lot of times, there are exceptions and chess is full with exceptions. So for example, going back to this remark that pushing the pawns in front of the, I mean, pushing the pawns where your king is about to castle is dangerous. There are exceptions to this rule that sometimes you need to have, this is what I call a proper pawn play to generate targets. And that's why this H4 was so interesting here. Because when you're thinking about how to create targets in your opponent's camp, the least valuable things you can use, they're the pawns, right? So that's why very often most of the best openings and all the modern trends involve aggressively using the so-called pawn play. So I've seen many modern openings when white plays h4, h5, and then even castle short. So this is pretty advanced stuff. Okay, and h3 is just, just fine. Knight h6. I like this move because uh, Dina keeps all the options to play either bishop f5 or bishop g7 and short castle. Senti says that Alto stands for at least 21. Can you please elaborate on that? What does that mean? At least 21. What does that mean? You have to be 21 years old to play in the tournament? Really? No kids in the tournament? Oh, really? Wow. Oh, so that's why the title, No More Underrated American Kids. I got it. I could not understand why the title. I mean, I did not come up with the title. So that's Dina. I got it. I got it. No kids. Only adults. <laughs> right. Um, there is a question on YouTube chat. Did Dina win or draw last night? Dina won. She was dead lost. She was in time scramble, but she managed to fight back. Because, again, if the opponent is lower rated, at some point the difference in the class starts to tell. So, she kept fighting. The opponent... I guess, was a bit too excited that he's winning and she won the game. That was pretty crazy, I agree. <laughs> I mean, Matthew looks pretty tired. I don't know, Matthew, what you were doing yesterday. You look tired to me. Uh, there's a question, would I play with white or black? I assume this position. Well, I like white's position more, if that's what you ask me. I like white's position more. But this move, h3, I think it was too shy. There's nothing wrong with the move. I have a feeling that something more aggressive should have been played. All right. Wow, that's a gigantic cup. I don't think I've seen such a big cup. I mean, could it be some product from the big gulp? No? I remember when, um, when I was in uh, Las Vegas, 
one of our favorite stops was getting the drinks from the Big Gulp. No, that doesn't look like it's probably brought from home. What cup? Thermos, yeah. Maybe it's a thermos. Look like a cup. Ah, no. Is there psychological intimidation in over the board chess like other sports? That's a great question. Yes, there is. Absolutely. And there's so many things you can do to in intimidate your opponent. And you know, one of the most annoying things that I have faced myself during the, uh, my professional career, it's the, it's the stare. You know, when the opponent stares at you, I mean, he directly looks into your soul. It's allowed, but it's so annoying. I mean, I've always believed that chess at the professional level is a gentleman's sport. Okay, ladies' sport as well. Yeah, but it's you're always very nice to your opponent. So we we respect each other. But yes, there are definitely opponents who are trying to uh, undermine your performance. And staring is one of the most efficient techniques it's legal but you can do it but it's very annoying the second one is and i think that many players who have played over the board they can agree with this is showing the overconfidence yawning stretching like this the arms etc super annoying Drinking water. <laughs> yeah, so who was it? I mean, there's obviously a lot of chess greats who have said um, how big part is psychology in chess. I think Judith Polgar said I mean, pardon me if I'm saying it wrong. I think she said chess is about 40% psychology. 40%, 30, 40%. Some other players have said 30%. I think uh, Polgar said 40%. So it's obviously, obviously part of the game. So intimidating the opponent it can be done. But as you can see, Dina is not doing it. She's walking. Not only chess, of course. It's like in uh, many other sports. Where you try to degrade your opponent's performance. Mm. All right. How do you feel when my opponent looks at the board from my side? Uh, this this never happens. I I don't even feel maybe my opponent is standing be, uh, be behind me. Basically, it never happens. And uh, what I have noticed that most of the time these stares, these uh, all kinds of psychological tricks to get under your skin, this most often happens from. The younger generation. <laughs> and hence maybe this is why this is Alto Tournament. I don't know why. Oh, there's Canty, indeed. James Canty is right there, also playing in the tournament. Another famous figure among streamers. Um 
Yeah, you have to write every move or a or a botro says. You have to write on every move. No, but Dina does not always stare. Look at that. Yeah, she's at the board president, but she's not trying her opponent to feel uncomfortable. There's a difference having occasional stare in the eyes of the opponent and staring indefinitely. All right. Well, Matthew, it's time to move. I don't know what he's thinking about. I mean, maybe he's thinking about something like G4. Could it be he's thinking something like G4 to impress the knight on H6? Uh, it makes sense. But it's a bold move because if you play G4, you have to ask yourself where your dad is going to go. It's not going to cost a short, right? Okay, let's let's have a look at this. Let's say g4. White tries to stop bishop e5, knight e5. There also could be an idea to play bishop e3, queen d2, try to trap the knight. Makes sense, right? So what if I play f6 to attack the center? White could take on f6 and grab the pawn on c5. Makes sense. Because after bishop takes on c5, the knight on h6 is falling. So we could try to improve the idea. How about we play c dx on d4, c dx on d4, and now play f6. g4 is on the board. That is brave. Now that, that's a brave choice. Now the question is how does react uh, how does Dina react to this? I think it's good news for her because her opponent is making risks. You know, sometimes when you're playing against lower rate opponent over the board chess, there's this uh, one of the most annoying approaches, which is a much more significantly lower rated opponent is playing for a draw. This sometimes happens. And that's the reason why sometimes higher rated opponents higher rated players, they avoid playing the mainstream theory because the opponent has studied it and might trade basically every single piece just to get the draw because quite often they treat the draw as the perfect result. And since H3G4 was just played for, uh, was just played by White, I think that Dina has mixed feelings so the first feeling is she's happy. She's happy that the opponent is not going to play for a draw. And he's going for complications. And if he's going for complications, this means more chances for Dina. Then there's the second feeling. Maybe she's going to not like her position after G4. All right. The question is, should we include CDX on D4? No. Dina decides not to do it, and she plays Bishop G7. Okay. It's a move. I think Bishop E3 makes a lot of sense here. Bishop E3 with the idea to play Queen D2, which could force some things. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. How about we take it and push a five? Can we do this? The point is, if you take an f5, I take with the bishop, I trade the last of bishops, put my knight on f5, and I, I'm doing great. All right. But there could be queen d2. 
hitting the knight. I go here. Now g takes an f5. The knight no longer can grab the pawn on f5. Takes, takes, takes. Yeah, it doesn't look great. No. It doesn't look great. Yes, this looks very dangerous for black. I agree. I agree. Okay, maybe not a five. How about we play f6? Because queen e2 is a problem. That is a problem. The knight cannot go back to g8. So let's try f6. White plays queen d2, knight f7, takes, takes, or f4. I have a feeling the game is heading to this direction. And the white is probably going to cost on the long side. Let's say we take on e5. Take on e5, maybe short castle, knight c3, and then black try to do something at the queen side. I mean, white chances look better, still look better. But of course, I mean, the white is still to make the move bishop p3. Yes, yeah, Senti is again mentioning that 2054 is the rating of a different person. So we have a completely different guy here. There's two Matthews. So Matthew Sammons. Apparently there are two, two Matthew Sammonses. Could I increase the size of the board to see it better? Yes, but it's probably going to come at the expense of Dina. <laughs> I'm not sure where I could position the board. Maybe, you know what I could do? I could do it like this. I mean, you already know that obviously Dina plays with black. Maybe this is a bit better. Okay? Yeah, maybe this is better. Okay. I mean, I don't really have a lot of space to put the board because we want to see Dina. And yeah, putting on the left, then we would not see Matthew. And we want to have a proper read of Matthew's body language, how he feels. All right. So Bishop P3 is played. Yes, Bishop P3 is played. By the way, once again, I think I said this at the very beginning, is that there's a delay uh, for the transmission. Uh, all the incoming moves have a 10-minute 10, 10 delay. The reason is fair play. Yeah, she should. She should play uh, C takes on D4 and F6. I think so. Or maybe she she has to cook up something else. Wait a second. I have a different idea. I have an idea. Wait a second. How about we play C4? You know, you're normally not supposed to do this. Because you remove all, all the tension from the center. But hear me out. So I play F6 to save the knight. Now queen d2, the knight here is going to be feeling not so great. And if uh, white plays, let's say, f4, I could put my knight on f7 and start this queen set attack with b5, b4. Yes, I see Dina already played f6, and I start not to like it. Wait, so I think that c4 and then f6 made quite a bit sense. Now... Wait, so if Matthew is going to take with f6 and take the pawn on c5, 
What is this position? The bar says black has a full compensation. Hmm. Not very obvious to me. Why would it be full compensation? I guess because uh, black has some counterattack against the white king. Short castle looks not great. Long castle maybe is a bit risky. So let's say we play knight of seven. Something like knight e4, followed by knight e2, knight of three. Just a second, I'm a bit confused. So where's the where's the catch? F5 is queen d2. I don't see why this should be great. Maybe knight e5, treading with some checks. Again, knight e4. Hmm. All right, I'm going to cheat a bit. I, I want to see what the, the Silicon Beast is suggesting here. F5. And after Queen D2. Oh, oh, 95. Now. And it idea is that you could take here knight of three is a check and after knight e4 i take on d3 and take on g4 that is insane i mean i'm a gramster it's not very obvious to me but okay i mean there's gonna be a different move so i was really curious why engine supports this as a possible choice and instead we have our answer White plays f4, very confident. Shove forward, strength in the center. Now, I think c4 and f5 looks very interesting. So look at this. c4, here, and f5. Yeah, engine is not my friend, apparently. So the point is, if you take it, I take on f5. Obviously. And if you play g5, I put the knight on f7. And after h4, I lock the king side. And then the queen side belongs to me. You know, I'm not entirely sure if this f5 is a necessary move. But uh, c4... And b5, b4 is definitely there. Tornik is asking, who is the strongest Grandmaster who I, I have defeated? <laughs> I mean, next week, my YouTube channel is going to have a new video. How I defeated Vladimir Kramnik. So he's officially the strongest Grandmaster I have ever defeated. Show Castle. That is interesting. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Yes, yes. So I, I beat him. Chessable Masters play in. It was a rapid online tournament. So not really over the board. Rapid, rapid. 10 plus, 10 plus 2 or something like that. Right. So my only win over a world champion. all right oh look at that yes this is psychological warfare dina stretching arms having a power sip she's good <laughs> are you a tiger Indeed.
Yeah, so actually I think my username should be already in the title. Dear mods already did it for me. I'm Arthur Nexions, Latvian Chess Grandmaster, a fellow colleague of Dina's. We used to have some collaborations in the past, but it's been a while. I mean, she plays Shoot Castle and uh, essentially her, uh, her idea is that come and do your worst. I'm not afraid of you. Do your worst. Uh, you, you know, I'm not entirely sure about this entire idea, but what I like what Dina is doing, she's really smart. She's keeping tension on the board because when you're playing against lower rated opponents, they very often want to have a clarity. You know, they want to have a clear plan. And that's why Dina is keeping the tension here. She's keeping the tension here. And she's not clarifying the situation for her opponent because she feels she will navigate the complications better than Matthew. So the strategy is understandable. But I'm not entirely sure I like the short castle because this could easily backfire. I mean, if White will be able to start his king's attack simply like h4, h5, this could be ugly. We'll see. At the moment, the position is about level. And also, I think it's important to mention that uh, at the moment, she has amassed almost 20 minute lead on the clock. She's doing all right. And I think that if I'm playing with white, I'm thinking, where do I put the king? I mean, short castle, it, it is a possibility. Yes, it is a possibility, although these pawns are so far advanced, black cannot easily get to the white king. But most likely, white is thinking about a long castle. So, knight e2, knight f3, queen d2 on long castle. This makes perfect sense, but it's very, very slow. So let's try to make it work. Let's say knight e2. I want to put the knight on f3, play queen e2, a long castle. But Matthew is thinking, wait a second. So let's say even if black plays c4, bishop c2, b5, knight f3, b4, queen d2, rook b8. Do I really want to cast the long side? Maybe not. All right, if I don't cast the queen side. What do I do? Maybe castle short side. But I have already pushed those pawns forward. Maybe instead I have to grab the pawn on c5. So let's say takes it, takes it and take on c5. The king is weak. There's no short castle. A lot of things to think about. So he is not feeling comfortable. Yeah, I see our chat members are saying that Dina is wearing Bottas' merch. Well, I don't really know what it looks like. I'm going to have to trust you. So it, you probably recognize it. It's Bottas' hoodie, right? <clears throat> Dan says that you're still waiting for my merch. Yes, it's coming. Long overdue. I'm probably going to have it at some point. I don't know when. Uh, there is a suggestion from the YouTube channel. Something like knight g4 and bishop takes on g4. Well, I don't think that it's possible right now. 
Because in order to get an attack against the White King, you're going to need more pieces. That being said, this sacrifice on g4 or even on e5, it could be at some point. For example, let me just show you some crazy lines. Let's say white plays knight e2. And, okay, I'm going to try to find something. Let's say knight f7, maybe not ideal move. Let's say whatever, a3. And there could be moments when you could consider sacrificing a piece on e5. There could be moments. Yeah, there's some knight of three checks, knight e3, d4, the king is weak. So we can't completely rule this out. But I mean, of course, I mean, white is not going to play a3. So it makes no sense. <laughs> One of my merch slogans could be, where, where is your dad going? <laughs> No, I said daddy, not dad. This daddy here on E1. Where's it going? So it's not 92 yet, I believe. Um, so yeah, shot castle. So this is the current position. In case you're wondering. No, oh, Dina is playing okay. You know, she played a um, a questionable opening. Oh, this entire idea, g6, uh, bishop g7, knight h6, it's pretty weird. But her opponent is charging forward, and this could explode very quickly. And she has more time on the clock. She's better rested than yesterday. Because yesterday, oh my goodness, it was five minutes before disaster. Fun in chess is playing Latvian Gambit against the local shopping center Chess Hustler. Yeah, funny you mentioned the Latvian Gambit. You know, I'm a patriot, of course, but that's the line I will never cross. Why is Dina still offering a gambit? Because she feels she is going to do better. Okay, let's let's try to analyze something, all right? Otherwise, I'm just talking and talking, and I'm the GM. I'm supposed to do some expertise analysis here. All right. So let's say e takes an f6. e takes an f6, and e takes an c5. So can white go here? Possibly. There could be a move of five. Let's try to make it work. Five. G5, probably knight of seven. And now white tries to, let's say, castle short. Yeah, I think this makes quite a bit sense because this feels like a shelter. The king is more or less protected. H6, H4, there's nothing happening there. Mm. But to be honest, I'm not sure how to continue here for black. Ah, wait, could be d4. Oh, this is strong. d4, c takes, knight e4. Now this king is feeling heat. And let's say knight c3. Let's say bishop e6, complete development. Okay, black has definitely compensation here. Followed by something like rook c8. The knight on f7 is a bit silly. I don't know. I mean, this this look, this is definitely something that uh, I would consider if I'm playing with white. But then again, then again, if you go back, if I want to take on f6, why don't I take on f6 right now? So I could have taken f6 right now. Takes, takes, and take on c5 right here. Do I need f4, which weakens the bishop on e3? 
So I think Matthew already made up his mind when he played a four. So what was it? F6, F4, and castles. So that's why here taking on C5 feels a bit strange. But then again, I mean, you have to do something. I mean, I think that he's probably going to go either short castle. This is my guess. Just to be consistent with his plan. Or try to cast the long side. But he's definitely concerned about C4, B5, B4. He's concerned. If he casts the short side, why did he play A3, G4 in the first place? Dina is playing good. Yes. Dina is playing good. She has put her opponent into an uncomfortable position. Where he has to make big choices. Yeah, the clock is ticking. I believe it's 55 minutes for white. So at the moment, Dina has half an hour lead on the clock. This is important. I mean, having the lead on the clock, it gives you confidence. And so far, white's body language is not great. He doesn't look very confident. Confidence is the last thing that Dina needs. She has too much of it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. All right, let's 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 try to play some human moves from the white's perspective. So, let's try to make a short castle. Yeah, I see the bar doesn't like it. I'm not sure why, really. I don't see any immediate problems. Could it be a sacrifice on G4? I have a hard time to believe. Like, I don't believe it. Takes, takes, knight G4. All of the black's remaining pieces here are not close. Even to get to the white king. So, something like queen D2. The bar likes it. I'm... I'm Quite amazed, to be honest. Takes, probably takes. Oh, there could be actually some problems. And maybe e6. You know, I don't know if all of this is real or not. But first, it's White who has to make the choice. Because very often we are defending from all the threats. Either they're real or they're phantom threats. And 92 is the choice of white. So he tries to keep all the options open, not to close any doors. And now it's going to be interesting how Dina is going to respond to this. I would bet that she's going to play c4, b5. Just to talk out why from castling the long way. This makes a lot of sense. Because somehow I feel that this... I mean, this also, by the way, could be a move. To talk out why from castling the long way. Like c takes, c takes. And something like... Bishop d7. Yeah, by the way, why not? C takes C takes, so let's say bishop d7. Would idea to play rook c8, queen b6, knight b4. So this is idea number one. 
And idea number two is to play c4, bishop c2, b5. With the idea is to play rook b8, b4, and white is definitely never costing long. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> there's a question on chat. Is this a plastic or wooden chess set? Uh, I think it's a wooden digital board. You know, this digital board, if I'm not terribly mistaken, it costs around, at least I know the pricing in Europe, it costs around 400 euros. So that will be around 500 US dollars. It's very expensive. These digital boards, they're very, very expensive. I mean, the board itself, maybe it's plastic. The, the pieces are definitely wooden. These digital boards are, oh my goodness. I, I don't really know this uh, particular company, this manufacturer of this particular uh, board, but I've heard uh, the pricing from some of the chess organizers. Uh, no, I don't have one, no. Not that I can't afford it, but I don't need it. Unless I'm planning to stream uh, games from my from my house. <laughs> I don't plan it to do it right now. Maybe later. Digital, you think, is something like 1,000 with pieces? You know, okay, maybe the pricing already has went up. I mean, the last time I checked it was around 400, uh, 400 euros. But it doesn't really change the fact that it's expensive. All right, so Dina is thinking definitely not about the pricing of the board. She's thinking about her choices what to do oh, maybe she's gonna play knight f7 i don't think she wants to relieve the tension from the king side just yet bishop g4 feels way too early f takes f takes could be interesting as well let's say take it here take it here and do something with this f file but what for example, takes, takes. You know, the more I look at this, I start to feel some serious heat for this big daddy here in E1. Maybe there could be already most like knight f7 and sacrifice on e5. This looks very human. How did Dina go to, uh, so far in the tournament? The Tom dude is asking on Twitch chat. She won the first game. This is round number two. F takes. F takes looks interesting. And if Y plays D takes. Now what? D4? Takes, takes, bishop f2, bishop e6, and whatever it is this. This is madness. Looks completely crazy, and the white king is always weak. F takes on e5 would be a great choice here because this would put white in a very difficult spot. I mean, how do you recapture the pawn on e5? She's looking at the pawn on e5. Definitely she's considering this. I don't think she's right now looking at c4, b5. So she's trying to validate the consequences. What happens if she takes on e5? I mean, it does make sense. I mean, she's activated the bishop on g7, the rook on f8. So this position already feels like an achievement for black because this rook is more active, the bishop is more active, 
And ideas like an F7 and an E5 start to float around. They're there. Maybe D takes on E5 is a bit trickier. Because now the pawn on C5 is under attack. Again, you're thinking about all kinds of sacrifice ideas on E5 or D4 and Bishop E6. So this is her probably thought process. And maybe she's thinking, maybe I should keep more tension. Maybe I shouldn't release the tension just yet. Or maybe she's just thinking about the dinner. I mean, you never know. You never know. But you're sometimes thinking about during the game. There's a lot of famous stories about uh, famous chess players thinking about all kinds of things during the game, not chess related. Sometimes there's a, this very famous example about Mikhail Tal thinking about how to get Kipopotamus out of the marshes, out of the swamp, my apologies, out of the swamp. He was thinking during the game how to get Kipopotamus out of the swamp. And uh, considering all kinds of scenarios, like even using a helicopter. And when he spent all this time thinking about how to save the Kipopotamus, he decided, okay, let him drown. Okay, I mean, I can't help him. So, yeah, you never know what the creative minds are thinking about during the game. Some people think about the food. Some people think about their yesterday's experiences. Some people think about how they look. Some people think about content they're creating. Yeah, Matty here is thinking about the ice cream. Yeah, so you never know. But again, I mean, on a serious note, I'm sure that Dina is thinking about her possession. Probably. <sighs> yeah, when you're playing so long time controls, Sometimes there are these moments when you have like half an hour of nothing to do. Your opponent is in a deep tank. The guy is not making a move. You have already figured out everything there is to figure out about this position. And then you start to think about your place in the universe. What is the meaning of you? Why we are here, etc. You wouldn't believe. There's so many things to think about. And usually these thoughts, they evolve better when you have a nice, good cup of coffee, wouldn't you? And she has. I think so, at least. I'm not entirely sure what she's drinking there. A coffee or a tea. I'm myself a coffee person, totally. Coffee addict. For life. Mostly coffee, yeah? Yeah, could be. All right, she's reaching for a move. Is she going to take on E5? I, sh I think she's going to do it. She's going to take the juicer on E5. And then do something. Yeah, she's looking at a pawn on e5. It's really tasty. Really juicy pawn. She's gonna do it. Yeah, this is this is the ritual. I mean, when you are already when you already have decided what you want to do, you raise your hand. This is the last double check. You want to make sure you're not making a mistake. You want to make sure you're not rushing. Because the more experienced you are, you know that sometimes when you make a choice, there's no going back. So if Dina is going to take on e5, she wants to make sure she knows what she's doing. No, she plays c4. Okay. I had the wrong read. I thought she's going to take the pawn. c4 makes sense. It's a nice move. 
Now the question is what happens after bishop c2? I'm pretty sure she already made up her mind. So she's not going to get up because bishop c2 is basically the only move. She's trying to find something in her purse. Well, I'm a bit surprised that White hasn't responded with the automatic bishop c2 because nothing else really makes sense. Sacrificing on c4 looks ridiculous. I don't think that White is ready for this. Why would you sacrifice? Why? There's no good reason. Why should you do this? And uh, Bishop B1 makes no sense because it blocks the rook. It blocks your possibilities to cast on the long side. So Bishop C2. I'm curious what Dina is going to do after Bishop C2. Is it going to be B5 or is it going to be F takes on E5? And I think this is the reason why she's not getting up. She expects the opponent to play bishop c2 so that she can play her next move, whatever it is. But now? Is this any good, by the way? No, I'm not sure I like this. This f takes on e5 because now the pawn doesn't stand on c5 and white is completely taking over of the d4 square. So no f takes on e5. I suppose she wants to play b5. What else? What else? Maybe sacrifice on g4, really? Could we do this? I don't believe it. Nah, she's getting up. She is getting up. All right, bishop g4, knight g4. Not if one. Takes, takes. I'm missing something apparently. I look at one. We not each three to follow. All right, there could be some tricks here. Just a second. How did this cap? So here, bishop g4. I don't believe this bishop g4 for a single second if you ask me, but let's check this for the sake of analysis. The bishop needs protection. Knight f1 takes. Probably d takes. And this still could be a move. Or maybe knight e5 could be a move. With same ideas like takes and rook f1. Whatever is this. But uh, I think that after knight x on g4, white can just play bishop g1, which feels a better move. Uh, maybe now there's ideas like f takes, let's say d takes. And yeah, this is probably a bit too much. Although I have uh, some ideas here. White has difficulties to develop the pieces on getting the king to the safety. Maybe queen d6, bishop g3 could be idea. Yeah, the bar of course says this is ridiculous, as usual. Now I don't think that bishop g4 is gonna follow. Maybe she wants to play f5. g5 here h4 h5 close the king side and after g takes knight h6 yeah this looks a bit scary for black probably not a good idea or start with knight f7 to keep all the options open 
Yeah, so finally, White is going to play Bishop C2. Could have done it a bit earlier. A knight of seven, perhaps. I'm not sure that Dina did the right choice. The more I'm looking at this, somehow I like this f takes on e5 more. Maybe I would start with f takes on e5 right now. So that after d takes on e5, there's the opportunity to play d4 with some interesting complications. And now, after, let's say, f takes on e5, f takes on e5, maybe now she could have played c4, b5, b4. All right, what's done is done. Bishop C2 is on the board. Oh my goodness. You know, I just turned on the engine and I got an idea which I did not even consider at all. You know what it is? What is this idea? This idea sometimes is used in the French defense. The only move, according to the engine, to give black a great game is queen b6. Hit the pawn on b2, but there's more. There's more. Look at this. Do you see the spin? Do you see ideas like take on e5? It's there. So let's say why play something like rook b1. We could grab the pawn. You're going to take d takes because the bishop is under attack. And now there could be ideas like grabbing this thing. D takes, you take the bishop, and after bishop takes, takes on e5, there's a mate. You know, okay, I didn't see this. I'll tell you honestly, I didn't see this from the very beginning, so I was curious. Why engine, why the bar gives such a good evaluation for black? Because it seems that white has a solid space advantage. But it seems that this queen b6, it changes... A lot of things, and it's strictly the only move. And I have a feeling that Dina sees this. She she played c4 to be able to play queen b6, and this also could be the reason why White did not play bishop c2 immediately. I think he also expects queen b6. So <laughs> what sometimes players are doing in such moments, he's trying not to look into that direction at all. He's looking exclusively at the king side. He's staring at the king side. Yeah, this is very common. When you don't want your opponent look in the right direction, you focus your attention on the other side. You just try to, you know, push the thoughts towards the other side. Don't you even dare to look into that direction. But queen b6, I think it's coming. So, it could be idea like maybe b3. White could be attacking the pawn on c4. F takes on e5. And it just starts to explode. B takes. E takes. C takes. 94. 90. Oh my goodness. If you want to get very creative engine, start to come up with ideas to sacrifice on g4. Bring it on. Bishop g4, knight g4, knight g4, take on e4, take on c4, e5. The whole position goes kaboom. This is going to be fun. So let's wait and see if this is indeed happening. I think she's going to find this move because queen b6 is, now that I think about it, this is a common move in the French defense. There are some lines when this queen b6 and the attack on e5 is happening. I think I did not notice this move immediately because I'm not really 
uh, a Karkan expert, but Dina is playing Karkan her entire life. So I'm sure she already has played a couple of games with some Queen B6 ideas. Very nice discovery. Of course, we are going to have to wait and see if she indeed is going to pick it up. Thank you, GRS Tribe, for the kind words. I'm just getting too excited here. All right. What else is there? I mean, initially I was considering B5. Yeah, B5, B4 to talk white out of castling the long side. This also could be a possibility. And uh, probably white's chances are slightly better. Maybe because of this short castle. Because castling long would feel a bit dangerous. So white would play most like knight g3, knight of three, and just because white has this space advantage, white's chances should be better. So I hear we have a Samai raid on YouTube channel. So welcome raiders. I didn't get the alert, but I'm going to trust the dear viewers. Thank you. Uh, we are doing the coverage of uh, Dina's participation in the Alto Open in Charlotte, United States. Uh, my dear viewers are saying that no kids are allowed. Hence the title, no more underrated American kids. Because nobody, apparently below age 21, is allowed to play in the tournament. That's what they're saying. Don't take what I'm saying for granted. Blame the chat. All right. And then it's back, and now the big question is now the drums are there. You can hear it. Is she gonna find queen b6? She definitely expected bishop c2. She knows she expected that bishop c2 will be played. Now, is she playing queen b6 with the idea to sacrifice on e5, or is she not gonna do it? So let's go back to the current position right here. Bishop c2, this is the position. Queen b6. This is the move. I think she is staring at the bishop on e3. She is looking and asking some questions. How do you defend against this knight e5 threat? Yes! Queen b6 is on the board. And this is the move that Matthew did not want to see. He tried to divert all the energy towards the king side. And yet, Queen B6 is on the board. Look at that. His body language says, What is this? What is this? What I'm missing? Oh no! The pawn on E5 is there. Oh no, my bishop on E3 is undefended. I'm in trouble. Maybe he actually missed it. I mean, I missed it. But not Dina. And since he's taking so much time to write down the actual move, he looks to be surprised. He looks to be surprised. Yes, I mean, I definitely recognize this. So it took him something like half a minute to write down the move, just to digest what's happening. And now he sees it. He sees that the pawn on e5 is under attack. F takes, F takes, and knight e5 is suddenly becoming a huge threat. This could be a moment when white could panic. All right. Now the question is, what he's supposed to do about it? This is a very big moment of the game. Huge. Because if white feels he's in danger, if White feels he has committed a mistake, there's a very good chance he's going to make a second mistake in a row. He might suspect he has committed a mistake. And you know there is such a... Not a rule, really. 
I mean, it's a truth that once you commit the first mistake, very often the next mistake follows immediately right after. I think he's going to play something like b3 just to protect this pawn and somehow counter f takes on e5. Yeah, it's like a snowball effect, exactly as Matty says. It's like a snowball effect. So it's coming down from a mountain. The snowball is at the very beginning, it's rather small. And, you know, at the competitive chess, it's very often like this. So you play at an opening and you misplace something. At the very beginning, it's a small, uh, small annoyance. It's not a big deal. I mean, even the evaluation bar says you're doing okay. And then this small annoyance at some point, it's like a snowball coming down the mountain. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It becomes a problem. And then this problem becomes a very serious problem. You commit a big mistake right after it and that's it. You're done. Of course, I mean, he doesn't have the access to the relation bar. And this is, by the way, something which I've said many times for me. For myself, the evaluation bar is distracting. It is very distracting because when you see the evaluation bars going up and down, up and down, you're like, why is this happening? But when you're calculating things, when you're thinking about the variations, obviously there's no evaluation bar. But it's for you, the viewers, so that you have an approximate idea of what's happening. So now you see the evaluation bar says, that white is supposedly slightly better, but it's wrong. I think after the next move, it's going to drop in black's favor. Mark my words. I sometimes call it evil bar. Evil bar, not evil bar, but evil bar. It's really evil. Gives you the wrong ideas. I believe that's... James, James Canty, there's only one person in the chess world who is so fit, and it's only James. The man really works out. That's great. He's reaching for a move. He wants to be a move very quickly. He's clearly panicking. I think this will be a perfect moment for Dina to unleash some psychological attack. Like make a deadly stare, flex the muscles, e takes an f6. That's a panic. That's a panic. So he was clearly concerned about the capture on e5. E takes an f6. This opens up the e file. This is not a good move. Not a good move at all. E takes an f6. Dina immediately responds, and now she feels she's doing great. Look at this king here. The white daddy here on e1 is getting in trouble. The pawn on b2 is still under attack. Rook e8 is incoming. Think about ideas like f5, g5, knight f7, knight e6, knight e4. Also, the clock is so much in favor for, for black. All right. I mean, this is definitely a massive win for Dina. I mean, trade the strong e5 pawn for the pawn on e7, which didn't do much. Open up the e-file. First mistake is right here. I'm a bit surprised to see that the relation bar hasn't jumped uh, to Dina's favor. But it already feels that she's doing better. So let's say, why play something like b3? Now what happens? Oh, there you go. Now it's dropping. Now it's dropping. After b3. So what could we do? I mean, sacrifice on g4 is definitely there, but it doesn't feel that it's not... It doesn't feel that it's necessary. Not yet, anyway. How could we respond to this? Maybe rook e8. Attack the bishop. Let's say bishop f2. I 
I have a feeling something aggressive is necessary here. So how about we play a five? G5, knight of seven, takes, some sort of a takes, knight c4. Okay, this is probably not very accurate, but it's just going to give you some ideas. And queen b5, with bishop e6 to follow, queen d5 to follow. Yeah, the bar is jumping up and down, up and down all the time. Can't make up its mind. It's something definitely I would consider. Or maybe just even take on B3. Yeah, Imran is suggesting on YouTube chat maybe the sacrifice on G4 is there. I mean, maybe. I, I, I'm not sure. It could be. Yeah, Bishop G4... But somehow it feels like it's burning a lot of bridges. Like takes, 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 bishop g1. And now you like need to show something immediately. No, it doesn't feel right. Not yet anyway. Yeah, knight f1 is also a move, as Asser says on the Twitch channel. Yeah, maybe knight f1. Bishop g1, I, I like it kind of more. Double the rooks. Yeah, but maybe you can do it without the piece sacrifice. For example, let's say you started here, rook e8, bishop f2. And now, yeah, maybe even play bishop e6, you know. Just develop pieces. Where's this guy going? Short castle? Doesn't seem to be improvement. Long castle is out of the question. It's very dangerous for life. Yeah, this actually looks very logical. Very logical. And then double the rooks. At some point, play f5, g5, put the knight on d6, launch it on e4. Or, as Danya says, yeah, one of my favorite expressions from the great Narodetsky, he always says, anchor. Anchor the knight on e4. Yes. So we are going to anchor the knight on e4. It's never moving. All right, I think there was a move. B3. B3 is on the board. Yeah, Danya is great. Absolutely. <clears throat> so. So. Bishop e6 looks logical. Rook e8 looks logical. What do you do? I don't think there's going to be sacrifice on g4. It doesn't feel right. Not, not yet anyway. So Dina is going to look at this idea and she's going to discard it pretty quickly. She's too good to do this. She's not reckless. So I'm not sure. Is it going to be rook e8 or bishop e6? Both of these moves... Uh, look logical i think that probably it's going to be rook e8 to use the fact that this bishop has to move and then bishop e6 and one thing that you should know about strong players like dina is that um, they're very often thinking in series of moves so it's never just one move they're thinking about the great picture so it's not only rookie eight and it's not like i'm gonna make a next move and then see what happens so she's thinking i'm playing rookie eight most likely my opponent plays bishop f2 then she's thinking what i'm gonna do about this pawn i'm gonna play bishop e6 for example white is gonna take it she's thinking can i take it there's gonna be d5 can i sacrifice a piece here is there something here so it's um, a gigantic picture. Actually, this picture here doesn't look very good because I think that black is just losing a piece. So not good. Probably not like this. Actually, maybe this is why you play bishop e6. So that after the capture, there's no d5. Look at that. There's no d5. I mean, I just take the bishop. So considering this... Bishop e6 looks very 
human. I like it. Uh, why do I start with bishop g4 and not knight g4 is a question on YouTube chat. Um, I'm not sure what you need to sacrifice anyway. Like takes, takes, and bishop g4. The point of this sacrifice is you, one thing is what you have to understand. You're burning the bridges. So you play bishop g4, you sacrifice a piece. It means you have to do something immediately, right now. And it doesn't feel like black's pieces are ready to do that. And rookie eight, by the way, is on the board. So, I guess after the bishop f2, bishop e6 no longer is a move. At least after b takes on c4, d takes on c4 is not the move. But it does not really rule out the pawn sacrifice idea. I mean, I could play something like queen maybe c7. You know, I'm just going to sacrifice the pawn on d5. Let's say you take on d5, I play bishop takes on d5. I attack the king, I open up the e-file, I think about ideas like queen f4. And Dina is obviously a well-educated player to know the importance of a pawn sacrifice. So... I think it's going to be bishop f2 here, and she's already trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, you have to do something right away. No, not knight f1. I don't think it's knight f1. Because I think that right now Matthew is thinking, I, I have to get away my big daddy from the center. I mean, it's weak here. This is dangerous. And knight f1 prolongs it. He did play. He did play knight f1. That makes no sense. Wait. Why is he doing this? I mean, this makes no sense because I thought that the first thing that White should be thinking about is run away with the king. The king is feeling heat. It's feeling a lot of pressure, so you want to get away from the center. Nine of one. It basically shuts the door to castle towards the king side. There you go. The king is never going to get there. Maybe king f2 is a move. But short castle is not a move. And long castle, the reviewers, it doesn't feel very secure either. I think Dina is going to crush his opponent, her opponent, very quickly. So, at the moment, it feels like White is clearly panicking here. And uh, there's a lot of nice moves. Uh, Bishop e6 no longer looks logical, because why would I want to close the e-file? Taking on b3 makes a lot of sense. So let me just show you some moves. For example, takes to open up the queen side, takes, and how about I, I play something like knight a5? Just to open up the position. Now I want to get the knight on c4. If you take on d5, I play bishop e6. There you go. Let's say bishop e6, queen e6. Oh. There's something terribly wrong with White's position. Knight is coming to c4. This king is not going to go to the queen side. The easiest pawn sacrifice ever. So once again, how did we get here? Just take on b3. Probably bishop b3 to follow. And knight a5. Just to activate your pieces. The knight is getting to c4. The pawn on d5 can be sacrificed to open up the position. This looks just great. Yeah, so once again, there's some questions in the chat. Dina won the first round game. It was um, 
a huge escape. She was in huge trouble. She managed to fight back like a true champion. This is round two, only five rounds in total. She's playing board four. Today, there's going to be another round. I, I am not going to be doing the commentary for the next round because it's very late. Uh, it would be something like starting the commentary like at 1 a.m. Midnight. So I thought it's, it's a bit too late for me. But uh, I'll be back tomorrow for round four. I don't know who's going to be host for round number three. So you're going to see. Okay, what else is there? I mean, definitely CDX on B3 is not the only move. It's just very logical because this king is weak. And your logic suggests, what should I do? Open up the position. I should open up the position. How do I open up the position? I take on B3. So it's very logical. Yes, of course, there's a lot of exciting chess today. And it's the, also the 13th round of the candidates tournament. Of course, of course. But it's not only chess in Toronto. It's also in uh, Charlotte. Of course, most of the people are going to follow the candidates tournament. But I hope that you're also going to find time for Dina and her adventures in the next round. Actually, I think it should be the games already should be in the Candidates tournament well underway. And then only Dina starts to play round number three. So this opponent, this game will be finished before the candidate starts either way. She makes a move. Rookie seven. Rookie seven. That's a bit weird move. If you like my tea mug. <laughs> yeah. That's how my chat calls me. The boss. Yeah, rookie seven is a bit weird move. I slightly don't understand it. Uh, what's the idea? So she wants to play, I guess, bishop d7, rook e8, but it's a bit strange. Order the moves. So what happens after b takes on c4? I guess she wants to take on c4. Is it? No? No, it's not. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I think I know what she wants to do. She wants to play an a5. She wants to make a double pawn sacrifice. The point is after c takes on d5, knight c4. And then play bishop d7, rook e8, and do some very serious damage at e5. So this makes sense. And I think there's a fair chance that White is going to fall for this because all he sees, I think, is b takes, d takes, and d5. Attacking the queen. And now after rook e3, knight e3, queen e3, White plays d takes on c6, and he's pretty happy. I suppose. So rook e7 is slightly mysterious. But what is even more mysterious that engine somehow likes white's position. Now this is really mysterious. I don't understand it. Why? Probably queen d2. Queen d2 with the idea to cast long and play a five to go after the knight on h6. But I think there's a very good chance that white is going to take on c4. Because you know, this is the kind of situation I very clearly remember how when I was a kid, I had, um, I believe I still have, it's somewhere on the shelf, this book about Alexandra Lekhine's life. It's called 
White and Black, written by the Soviet grammar Alexander Kotov. And uh, this book describes Alexander Lekan's uh, life, his uh, path towards the championship title, his matches against Capablanca, Max Eve, etc. There was this one moment when I think it was Lasker who described, was it Lasker? Maybe it was Lekan, I don't remember. They described the situation in chess that sometimes in chess, when you get a direct blow, and this is the terminology in boxing, it's called groggy. So you're boxing, and Ina, by the way, is a boxer. <laughs> she has boxed before. Uh, so when you're boxing and your opponent lands a punch at you, or you land a pon or you land a punch, a direct punch at your opponent. It goes through the defenses. And at this moment, you're feeling very shaky. You're, you're in this groggy state. And I believe that Matthew is in the groggy state right now. Dina's first punch, Queen B6, went through. So even though objectively, White might be doing all right according to a chess engine, there's a very fair chance that... Because White is feeling quite shaky because of this first mistake, first trouble, that he is not going to pick up the best combination. So I believe Queen D2 a Long Castle gives White still a good game. Which, uh, by the way, brings the question. What stops Black from playing C D X on B3 and the same idea of Knight A5 to sacrifice the pawn? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about this Tyson's quote. Everybody feels a, a lot of confidence when they get punched in the face. Yeah, this is a very famous quote by Aaron Mike. He supposedly said it. All right. Okay, so maybe not Queen E2. Let me just check what the dear engine is saying. King F2. King F2. He is literally asking for the sacrifice on G4. No way this is working. No way Dira is not going to play Bishop G4 right now. I mean, Bishop G4, this is definitely incoming. There you go. So exactly what I said, he is in the groggy state. He feels unsecure, and I think Bishop G4 is going to finish the game right here. Bishop G4, Knight G4, hitting the king and the bishop, Knight A3, Knight A3, Rook E8. Wait, am, am I missing something? I'm missing Knight E5. Okay, well, just a sec. Just a sec. Let's try to work this out. Knight G4, King F3. This feels very close. Where's the killing blow? How about we just play f5? And rook e8? So I tried to make work immediate idea in id3, knight e3. And play rook e8. I got really excited. But then I noticed there's knight e5, which hits the queen on b6. Okay, maybe a bit too early. All right. But after king of three, the threats are not going to disappear anywhere. So we play a five, we secure the knight, and suddenly Dina's move rookie e seven makes perfect sense because she is about to double the rooks and start a very strong attack. Ah, she sees this. I mean, there's no way, there is no way she is not looking at bishop g4 because this idea to sacrifice the piece it was always there. And now with the king on F2, I think for Dina, it took like two seconds to spot bishop G4. Yeah, she's looking the pawn on G4 and thinking, yummy. This is easy. I got you. Your big daddy is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, she's definitely doing this.
Maybe in D she played rook e7 to bait. Why to play king f2? <laughs> and, and he's not even trying to hide it. I mean, his gaze is fixed towards the pawn of g5. I and mean, look at that. I mean, if I could like draw where he's looking at, it's fixate on a pawn on g4. <laughs> the angle is direct. So the pawn on g4, look at that, yeah? So he is looking at it right now. He's not even trying to hide it. And what I would do, I would like look at the queen side. <laughs> Just to try to try to get away Black's attention. Boom, bishop g4, like three minutes of thought. Immediately. There you go. That's it. Dina is gonna do this. Okay, maybe why doesn't have to take on g4? No fear. She's like a boxer. She feels the opportunity and she goes for it. No need to spend time. Long thoughts are overrated. You know, I've been in this situation, unfortunately, many times myself. And I'm wondering, what is Dina thinking right now? I bet she's thinking, this is good content. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, so why is that break suffering here? All right, there you go. H takes on G4. This is basically capitalization. There you go. Now G4. His position is falling apart. King of three. Maybe he still doesn't see them over five. King of three is going to follow. There's no way to defend the bishop on e3. Otherwise, if he plays something else, king g1 or king g3, Dina is going to grab the bishop on e3, two extra pawns with a weak king. It's going to be over. King of three. Go forward. Yep. I think it's about to be played. Thank you, Matty. Appreciate the kind words. It's my pleasure. King of three is on the board. So he is advancing the king, but not out of good life. And I think that that five also is going to follow immediately. So first thing that Dina is going to do, she's going to check, do I have a forced victory? Can I win the game immediately? So 93, 93 and rookie eight. Can I do this? So then she's going to notice there's 95. Maybe look at this continuation a couple of minutes and say, okay, I mean, I could do this immediately. So instead, I should play a five. She already made up her mind. She's just double checking. Yeah, Russian chess school in action. As one of the viewers says on the YouTube channel, indeed, she's fearless and uh, not afraid to enter complications. But I mean, this is just looking too good. So F5 accomplishes a lot of things. First thing, uh, this knight on G4 is well protected. Second, it opens the bishop. Third, it keeps the tension on the bishop on E3 with easy move rook E8 to follow. Uh, there could be something like BDX on C4. Then again, Rook E8. Rook E3 is killing. Knight A5, Knight C4 is also there. So, not that. Okay, what else is here? So, after a 5 what else can White do? Thank you, Justin, and everybody else. So, maybe something like Bishop G1. Retreat with a bishop, 
There's no shame in retreating, as they say. So we are going to play a rookie here, double the rooks. Hit the knight on e2. Knight g3. And this is where your countless hours on doing puzzles should start to pay off. I mean, there should be something here. Use your imagination. I guess find a way for the queen to join the action. Some queen c7 maybe. Hit the pawn on the four. Actually, now that I think about this, how do we, how do we crash through? I'm sure there's more than one combination here. Maybe we could play 98. With the idea to go 96, queen d6, maybe queen e6. Looks tempting. And if white tries to get rid of this knight from g4 with something like knight h2. There could be some shots on e3. I'm not sure. Let's have a look at this. Rook a3, probably it's a bit too early. Takes here. A 96. Oh. oh, this is looking really good. No, the bar says it's nothing. As usual. I thought I found a way to get all the pieces to attack the white king. Um... Why not bishop g1 instead of king of two? Theo is asking. Theo, you're talking about a very old position. This entire sequence of knight f1 didn't really make any sense. So f5? Of course this might have been avoided. Like I already said, I believe that White is in the so-called groggy state. He has already got the first punch. F5 follows. You know, I'm not going to, of course, immediately uh, announce that Black is completely winning. There's definitely a chance that this position could be misplayed. But the way this game is progressing is going to be over in five moves. That's what how I feel like. F5. And let's try to make it again work. Bishop G1. Rook goes here. And knight G3. White knows that he's in trouble. He definitely knows it. He has no illusions. <laughs> he's already eating his goodie. Yeah, not out of good life, definitely. Um, rookie one is a suggestion. I'm not sure I like to give up two rooks. Rookie one, rookie one, rookie one. If I do this, then I need to find the next move. Okay, maybe actually it's something like queen f5. Hit the pawn. I don't want to give up the rooks for the queen just like that. But if I play queen a5, and if, if this works with queen c3 and knight e4, this could be, yeah, this could be interesting. I mean, it's very difficult to defend this pawn. Queen a2 is there, queen c3 is there, knight e4 is there, the king's weak. The big daddy is not going to go anywhere. So, but I think that there's no need for white to do this. Uh, for black to do this, to play rookie one. Maybe start with. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking about these pieces, about the queen and the knight. I need to find a way to bring them towards the attack. How do I do that? What about knight? Knight d4. Knight d4. This looks a bit crazy. Knight d4. Why would I want to do that? 
Bishop d4, Bishop d4, Queen d4. I can sacrifice a lot of things, but the king escapes. I think that there's no need to rush. And uh, black would find, a, find the time to bring the uh, pieces to the attack because, I mean, you look at this position and ask yourself, can a white escape this deadly attack in the next couple of moves? It doesn't seem to be. Yeah, Bishop G1 is on the board. And uh, I think we are going to get our answer very soon. So the current position is this. Bishop G1. With knight g3 and knight h2 to follow. So I think this is going to be a very easy move. Rook e8 to double the rooks. And now to knight g3. You know, I'm pretty sure that Dina hasn't even thought about this position for too long. This is what we call the Grandmaster's intuition. She believes there's something. So in case you're wondering if Dina sees a fourth victory right here, I don't think so. It's just a very obvious sacrifice. Bishop g4, h takes, knight g4. Uh, you play f5. You activate, I'm sorry, you activate the other rook. And your logic, your experience just tells you that there's going to be something. That's the big difference. Maybe sometimes between club level players and chess professionals because they feel these positions really well. And let's say you have to knight g3. So she's going to... Uh, find a way to bring even more pieces to the attack. I just don't know exactly how. Is it going to be 98, 96? Is it going to be rookie one, rookie one and queen a5? It definitely deserves attention. Or is it going to be something slightly slower? Maybe queen c7? We are going to see because this is the position on the board right now. All right, listen, I'm going to make a very short break. Be back like in one minute. So don't go anywhere, obviously. <laughs> I'll be seeing you in a minute. All right. So what did I miss? <clears throat> so maybe let's try to make work this uh, forcing line with rookie one. Because if I'm Dina, I'm thinking, can I win the game immediately? Rookie one. Normally, we are not happy to give up two rooks for the queen this is like a big no-no i mean you don't want to do that two rooks are worth 10 the queen is worth nine and in open positions the two rooks together they tend to be better pieces but like i said at the very beginning of this broadcast chess is full of exceptions and here maybe getting rid of the queen gives black the access to the potency tree so what is this position? How does Y defend opponent on C3? Maybe B4? 
I play queen a3. I don't need a pawn on a2, I need a pawn on c3. Because the pawn on c3 holds the, together the center. Let's say something like knight e3. I'm not sure what to play here for white. And queen takes here. Now this is over. Wait, how do you even play here? Just a second. So, rook e1. You have to take the rook because the rook on a1 is under attack. Takes here, here, queen a5. How do you defend the pawn? Bishop d4 instead of queen a5. Oh. Why would I want to do that? I mean, okay, I can look at this. Bishop d4, knight e4, and king g2. Keep the pin alive. The bishop on c2 cannot be taken. The queen is under attack. I mean, I could try to make the same idea work with bishop uh, with knight e4 and bishop d4. Takes, takes, and something like rook e2. No, I don't like this. I don't like the sacrifice. I think that queen a5, we are going to get to the pawn on d4 with no sacrifice. I just don't see any defense. Oh, uh, This is killing. So, can you suggest me any reasonable move? Oh, wait, 92. I'm blind. 92, it's a good move. Yes, 92 is a move. And now I could... Can I now take on d4 because the rook on e1 is under attack? I can grab the pawn on a2, of course. But let's say I do this now. And I do this now. Knight e4 is queen c3. C takes on d4 is queen e1. But this feels a bit too much. So let's just grab the pawn on a2. Bishop b1. And queen b3. So what's the material balance on the board? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 2 rooks for the queen. Two rooks and then bishop for the queen and one, two, three, four pawns. <laughs> Very unusual position. But its king is weak. It's not safe. And black's idea is something like b5, b4. You know what I would do? I will be looking at this rookie one and I'm thinking, all right, listen, I have 51 minutes on the clock. If I find nothing else, I'm going to play rookie one. I call this the minimal program. This is how I call it. If I find nothing else, I'm going to play rookie one. I'm going to play queen a5, queen a2, take on b3. I'm going to go for this position. But maybe let's look for something more because i really like these rooks here i mean they're menacing rooks they're controlling the e-file they're giving all kinds of nice ideas so why should i give up the two rooks for the queen that's not the minimal program according to stockfish it's the only program <laughs> Seneca says on YouTube chat. Really? That's the only program? I mean, I'm not using any stockfish right now. So, I mean, any single time I'm using an engine, I'm saying you, I'm using an engine. Right now, I'm not using engine. There are a couple of moments when I switch it on because I don't understand why the bar says what it says. But not right now. So, I was thinking about the other idea was 98. Try to get those pieces to the attack. 
Maybe 98. Let's try to make this work. 98. Some queen e6, some knight e6, queen d6 ideas. Get to the pawn in the four. Rookie one idea maybe is going to still be there. Can you attack the f4 pawn? Jim is asking on Twitch chat. I'm thinking about this. Some knight here, here, here ideas. So knight h2, now what happens? I want to get rid of this knight. Maybe knight e3? Takes, takes. King goes God knows where. Oh, no, this is still good. This is falling. This is falling. 96 is incoming. There's something like five or six pawns for the piece. More than enough to win the game. So 98 looks very human. B takes, D takes, opens the queen. So I don't think that this is white's idea at all. The knight on g4, if I'm white and I'm sitting from the white's angle here, let me look at this position from the white's angle. The first thing I'm really concerned about is the knight on g4. I want it gone. So the only way you want to, you can get it away is either knight h2 or maybe rook h4 to sacrifice an exchange on, on g4. Nothing else is in my mind. Okay, maybe rook h4. Yeah, but again, I mean, is this king going to feel safer on g4? Probably not. So, yeah, 96, I suppose. Takes, takes, king g4. Yeah, I just love the bar. Yeah, I mean, there could be h5 as well. Yeah, I'll, uh, not to allow the sacrifice on g4. But I mean, rook h4 is a very difficult move to make. I'm I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that uh, Matthew is gonna play just knight h2, and then Dina is gonna play knight e3, pick a lot of pawns, and win the game. If she indeed plays knight e8. Yeah, so it's either rook e1 or activate these pieces. There's nothing else. No knight move, no pawn moves, no bishop move. Only rook e7 move, which is only one. Queen move, queen a5. Yeah, by the way, there was a suggestion in chat. Pardon me if I ignored it. Queen a5 is a move. But I just don't see what to do after queen d2. Somehow the screen on a5 doesn't feel right. So I'm thinking about improving the knight, 98, 96. I mean, if you want to be completely crazy, we could consider ideas like some counterattack from white, like knight f5, knight f5, bishop f5, hitting the bishop, uh, with the bishop on the pawn on h7, the knight on g4. This is also something that Dina has to consider. Because she's not only thinking about herself, she's thinking about the opponent. And very often, when I explain what the players are thinking about, it's like you're thinking about a puzzle. I mean, I'm not talking about the chess puzzle, I'm talking about a literal puzzle you're trying to put together. It has a lot of pieces, obviously. So imagine you have, you have to put together a 1,000 piece puzzle. And it's impossible to put together the picture if you're just using the white pieces. So there's white pieces, there's black pieces, right? And you're just trying to create a picture without using the other color pieces. So very often in chess is like this. Yeah, you are in your mind putting all the pieces together 
and thinking about how it looks like. Because as soon as you start to think only about yourself, about your own pieces, and not about your opponent and his ideas, there's a good chance you're going to miss something. The more time Dina is going to spend, the better the odds she's going to play rookie one. Otherwise, if she would have played the move quickly, she would have played 98 already. What do you think, dear viewers? Is she going to play rookie one? Is she going to go for the forcing line for this funky continuation? Rookie one, rookie one, queen e1, takes, 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 queen a5, knight e2, queen a2, bishop b1, queen b3. If she is, if she is going to go here, or instead, she is going to keep the tension and play something else like knight e8. She hasn't yet decided. I don't know. I could easily imagine Dina playing rookie one. I would seriously consider rookie one. But I would be having conflicted feelings. I mean, the question again is, can I give a clear evaluation for this position, takes here and here. I try to calculate it as far as possible. I know this is a big decision, so I want to spend here some time. On the other hand, if I if I play ninety eight, maybe this gives White a chance to regroup the pieces, like. Queen d2, knight e6, and something like knight h2. So maybe it's time to force things. The more I'm thinking about it, I think Dina's going to play rookie one. Yeah, I'm undecided. Yeah, she's looking at e1 square. I can tell. And uh, she's definitely not the kind of player who has any... Uh, okay, she played something else. She played queen c7. But she's definitely not the kind of player who has objections to give up two rooks for the queen just because it's wrong and you're not supposed to do that. Queen c7 is a nice move. Hitting the pawn on a four. I did not consider this, but 98, 96 might be still there. So what happens after knight h2? Knight h2, I suppose there's going to be either knight e3. Ah, rook e3. Rook e3, rook e3, king g2, and this is a, a massacre. There's no way, there's no way white is going to survive this. Something like knight f1, and boom. Boom, knight e3, you're gone. So, yeah, you cannot do that. And uh, now that h2 doesn't work, and instead white played queen d2 very quickly. This means he anticipated queen c7. Mm. Now what? So the queen has been improved. Is it time to give the knight on c6 better prospects? Pawn push b5. There's a suggestion in my chat. 
No, I don't think so. It feels very slow. Uh, B5 here, I think there's nothing happening in the queen side. What is important is happening right here. The knight on g4 is not going to move. The rooks, I don't see where to place them. There's no more any rookie one. The bishop potentially could go to h6 in some lines. Maybe something like h5, bishop h6. Hit the pawn. My money would be on the knight, on the queen side knight. 98 and 96. I'm sure that Dina has some doubt because this is a bit slow. That's why she took so much time to play Queen C7. She has some doubt. She is not entirely sure. But okay, I mean, she already made up her mind. She did not play rookie one to force things. Knight B8 is a suggestion. Knight B8, Knight E7, Knight F6. Maybe. Again, it's very slow. You know, one thing I'm not entirely sure, how much time does black have? Because white also wants to play knight h2. At some point, I get rid of this knight. So let's say we play knight e8 and white tries to play knight h2. And the bar, of course, hates it. Is it going to be rookie 3 again? Rookie 3, rookie 3. If king g2, this is... Again, white is dead instantly. The queen is dropping. Goodbye. Knight g3, queen e2, win the queen. So knight h2, rook e3, maybe white can give up the queen. Takes, takes, takes. And boom. Something like this. Take the queen on c3, bishop d4, knight e6. Now this is falling apart. There's no way white is going to hold this position. And knight h2 is a very human move. Okay, let me check what the engine is suggesting here for white so, so that we can laugh together. So engine says the best move for white is Rook H4. I mean, I had this idea before that maybe at some point there's Rook H4 to take on G4 or a king, I suppose. In the chat, there was a suggestion to play H5. So the Silicon B says Bishop 5. G takes the 5, Rook H5. And somehow black is winning. I mean, black is still winning this. So, okay, I'm not sure if this was huge help. So now I can turn it off. The second idea that Stockfish was trying to say that King G2 is also a moon, but it's not very human. After King G2, I see a lot of problems with Knight E6. How do I defend this pawn? Do I go back? Knight e2, I see all kinds of ghosts at the e-pile. I don't want to go there. If I'm missing something from the white's perspective, uh, white's perspective something like knight e5, you're done. So I don't see him playing king g2. Most likely he's going to play knight h2 or rook h4. My money is on knight h2. If Dina indeed is going to pick up knight e8. So I'm predicting knight e8, white is going to play knight h2, and after knight e3, takes, 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 d is going to take on b3 and win the game. That's my prediction. It's probably too far-fetched, but there's a fair chance it's going to happen. Uh, bishop h6 is also a move, yes. 
Bridge page 6, knight e2. This is a move we don't want to miss. Because this knight on e2 defends everything. The pawn on f4 and the pawn on c3. And if Dina doesn't play knight e8, then I don't know what she does. Yeah. So, same thought process. Knight e8. Uh, bring the knight closer to the attack. And uh, I think knight h2 is going to follow here. Knight h2, or there's also a fair chance that uh, Matthew could pick up rook h4, but I don't think so. I think he's so unhappy about his position that he is not going to pick up rook h4, which might be the best move to keep the game alive. So I guess we are going to get our answer pretty quickly because also clock situation. Oh wait, clock situation is still fine for White. He cast 28 minutes versus Dina's. I don't see her clock from this angle. Just a second. Can I get a better view? 20 something. I don't see how much time she has. So far, Dina is playing a beautiful game. I have a feeling she should have played Rookie One. And uh, in the post game interview, she is definitely going to tell you that uh, she considered Rookie One and her reasons why she was not sure about it and why she decided to play Queen C7 and 98. Now that is a very tricky machinery there to get the drink. Look at that. I mean, you basically had like a combination to get it open. Did we decide is she a coffee drinker or a tea fan? I don't really know, to be honest. What's she drinking there? doesn't really matter, I guess. Both. There's no such thing as both. In general. Either you are a tea drinker or you're a coffee drinker. Ah, we have yours who are both. I'm drinking right now black tea, by the way. But I'm a totally coffee person. All right. Water is good. The engine did not show 98, Esser says in Twitch chat, but this is a very human move. It makes perfect sense together with Queen C7. So she is rerouting her pieces to get to the White King. Knight H2. I think it's about to happen. It's going to be a mistake. If uh, Matthew is going to pick up Rook H4, I'm impressed. This means that he has recovered from this groggy state we discussed before.
King G2 makes no sense. So I believe this was when I switched on the engine briefly for a moment. King G2 just makes no sense because 96 is something you are very concerned about. Oh, wait a second. There could be a sacrifice on a 5. Yeah, this is something we haven't yet discussed. So maybe you go for a crazy counterattack. How about I try to do something like... Yeah, by the way, this makes sense. Bishop a 5 and I a 5. How about this? How about this sacrifice? It doesn't feel good, but it could be worth a look at. So I have a feeling now rookie two probably is gonna work. Takes, takes, here, and some sort of a queen of four. There's, doesn't feel good for white. So queen e4, queen h1 ideas. Okay, again, the bar is laughing at me as usual. I'm used to that. Maybe 96. Actually, this is not so clear. I told you. I told you. Knight h2 is on the board. So he commits the decisive mistake. Uh, I tried to look at bishop f5. Instead, he was concerned about the knight on g4. And this is a move that Dina is going to be very happy to see. She's going to play knight e3. And we are going exactly for the line which I told you. I mean, maybe after knight e3, why doesn't really have to take? There could be some other moves. Yeah, but what are they? I mean, rookie one? It feels like I'm blundering something. What I'm blundering? Knight c2? Rookie seven? Wait, there's no mate? Somehow there's no mate. Wait. Rookie one. And if I play now bishop h, oh, this is looking nasty. Bishop h6, bishop e3, rook e3, somebody call an ambulance, but not for me. Rook e3, queen f4, rook e3 to follow. Oh my goodness. I think we already saw this line. Something very similar, at least. Knight f1, boom, boom, here. Everything just falls apart. Right. So, knight e3 looks really good. Bishop e3, rook e3, followed by c takes on b3. We looked at this line. Going back has some bad vibes. I don't know. Have a feeling again, there should be some shot like, I'm not sure, maybe take and take. A 96. Queen d2. Oh, maybe there's bishop e3 actually. Yeah, bishop e3 is a bit better. Just a second. Let me think. Let me think. So I'm pretty sure that Dina's... Ah, oh, rook e3. Oh, wait, wait. What I'm even talking about? I mean, we did we did discuss this, right? What I'm talking about? What knight e3? I'm blabbering here. I mean, we did discuss rook e3 before, did we not? <laughs> I think I simply forgot it. I mean, we did discuss this before, right? Takes, 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 king g2, queen e4. I mean, we talked about this. Oh my goodness. 
My old head. Yes, I... Ah. I mean, you kept a part of me. It's 8 p.m. here, so my brain is no longer working. So, of course. I mean, we talked about Rookie 3. What I'm talking about? I just saw an i3-3 and I forgot about Rookie 3. Of course, of course. Yes, yes. Rookie 3. I'm silly. Completely forgot. So, Rookie 3 takes, takes, takes here. Yeah, I already told you I predicted this line to be winning. And after Bishop b3, Queen c3, King e2... Yeah, I don't know. Something like... 96... Here... And there could be some final shot like... Oh wait, I'm maybe also taking the knight somewhere. I'm thinking some smart mate. So the king doesn't really have a lot of good squares to go. Yeah, rookie tree, that's it. Hmm. I think she's going to spend here, like, two minutes. Not really more, because this is why she doubled the rooks at the e-file. Why she rearranged the pieces, so that at some point, rookie three might work. Now, there you go. Bishop h6 is a suggestion. No, I don't think bishop h6 is going to happen here. There's no need. On uh, the YouTube chat, there is a question. What's the time situation? It's about equal. Yeah, pardon me. Because I have reduced this board, you can't no longer see the clocks. Uh, it's 25 minutes for white at least with this delay could be less and uh, for d knights 28 definitely 20 plus minutes for uh both players and there's extra 10 seconds per every main move So, let's look at this line again. Here. Check. If white doesn't take it, queen of four. Big threat. Um, takes. Here, two heavy pieces definitely are going to find a way to uh, deliver the mate. The simplest one could be queen g4. No way to defend. If white plays knight f1, rook g3. Knight g3, the queen on d2 remains undefended. You can't do that. So it's very easy. The knight on g3 cannot be protected. If it goes away, something like this. Again, rook g3. Nice move. So... After rook e3, takes, takes, the only chance for white is to take it. And since white wants to play knight e2 to defend the pawn on the 4 and uh, c3, then we play c takes on b3. Now here you see the reason why Dina played queen c7 in the first place. So the bishop is under attack. Bishop b3, queen c3, king e2 I suppose. And now I don't I don't see where's the immediate blow, where's the killing shot. There should be. There should be. So it could be some maybe even just take on G3. Somehow I don't want yeah, by the way, what I'm talking about, I just take on G3. I thought this is an equal trade. It's not an equal trade. Just take on G3. And everything falls apart. Yeah, Queen G3. 
Knight of three. Takes it. But this is, by the way, so obvious. I mean, it should be winning, of course. One, two pieces. I uh, want two pawns for the two rooks. Queen and two pawns for the two rooks. Exposed king. So I would say that queen takes in g3 is my minimal continuation if I find nothing else. And then I would look for something more. Maybe give some check on b2. So if the king goes here, I take on d4 with a check. And after king of 3, I'm trying to find this, you know, trying to find a mate. Somehow get the knight on d4. Yeah, but there's always bishop d5, of course. So takes, takes. Here, here. Okay, maybe King E2 is not very human. He's going to play King F2. Check. Here. Check. Here. And something like this. Should be winning. I'm a bit surprised that she hasn't yet made a move. I mean, don't tell me she's thinking about my hallucination 93. I mean, of course, there is a very small possibility. I don't think it's possible that she does not see C takes on B3 at the end of the line. But I mean, come on. No, oh, I'm sure she sees this. Like takes, 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 and takes. Because this entire line is holding together on C takes and B3. Because if there is no C takes on B3, then it's very difficult to go here. Because why is going to play 92, knight of 3 and solidify the position so i mean you need to see this from afar so i'm sure she sees this and she's just somewhere about here about here trying to find the first win Is there something else she might be thinking about? Maybe she's thinking about keeping the knight on g4 with something like h5. But that feels less. Like maybe she's thinking about h5. I don't really believe it. Takes, takes and something like king g2. Bishop h6. Yeah, but bishop h6 I don't understand. <coughs> Pardon me. Takes, takes, and the king could go to g4. Now you see this bishop on h6 is under attack. And I don't see any sacrifices here. There's no rook e4 to win the queen. Where was this? Sorry. Um, yeah, 98 and 92. This is the position. I believe I can refresh. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. I just wanted to show you the engine's evaluation that knight h2 is an actual mistake. I mean, we already figured this out before.
You gotta move, Dina. Gotta move. Yeah, I also don't see anything else. The way she played it out, she got Knight H2 extracted. She extracted Knight H2 from the opponent because it was very human. Rook E3 is the way to go. Russian school says you must calculate all checks. Yeah, by the way, I have a question. Have you given a try to Dina's latest project, Russian Chess School? I saw it, by the way, that she opened uh, this chess school on school.com. Nice project. I was, uh, I was really impressed. And I was uh, thinking about even opening one myself. Probably I'm never going to get around to do it. She has 40 minutes left. All right. Yeah, I don't see from this angle. Because I have a smaller window. You're probably watching this full screen. You have a better view than I do. <clears throat> Am I going to open a Russian chess school as well? No. Why not? I'm not Russian. I could open a Latvian chess school, a non-competing chess school to Dina school. Uh, probably not. I was thinking about it. The clock is not very readable, right? Yeah, I thought so. It's a bit blurry. Ah, she's gonna do it. She's reaching for rookie tree. It's time to make the move. Yes, Latvian chess school. <laughs> I mean, us, we Latvians, we have some amazing chess tradition. So obviously, Mikhail Tal, the formable champion, comes from Riga. Alexei Shirov, also a famous chess player, comes from Riga. Alexander Shabalov. How many times U.S. champion? He moved to U.S. Uh, in the '90s. He also from. He's also from Latvia. Latvian American here. Oh my goodness! We have Latvian American. Wow. On Dina's uh, Twitch channel. Hello there. Nice to hear that. <laughs> And then it says, and there's the guy Nixon yeah, on my channel. Yeah. And then there's me. Sakey. Yeah. Hello. Hello. All right, Dina. I mean, you got to move. This is getting too long. You got to move already. I think that you don't want to get to a complex position with little time left. So she's spending a bit too much time on this move, Rook E3. Probably she just wants to make sure she got this. I slightly don't like it. I mean, I felt that this Rook E3 should have been played, like, immediately. So once again, the sequence, I believe, is Rook E3 here, Rook E3, Queen E3. And there's something that she doesn't like here. Bishop b3, queen c3, and king f2. I think she doesn't see the forcing win. And that's why she's not going here. She already sees this line. And if she's not going to find anything more forcing, she's going to go here. Would I ever think of knight f6 in this position or this is an engine move? I mean, really? 
Agents suggest here not f6. If she wanted to play knight f6, she should have played it in a couple of minutes to keep more tension. And now that she has spent like 15, 20 minutes on the move, knight f6 makes no sense. She needs to force things. Otherwise, imagine this. She is going to enter a time scramble with a potentially good position, but still a complex position with little time on the clock. Now she, she's got to do this. Again, I, I can't get in her mind what she's thinking about right now. There's something she, does, she doesn't like. I'm sure she already figured out what happens after King G2. But it's this line which she's not sure about. Takes, takes, Queen C3, King F2. Takes here. I think she's about here. Oh, wait a second. I just take the rook here on a1. King h3, take it. Take it. Come on. This is totally easily winning. All right. I'm a bit puzzled. If the king doesn't go to f2, the knight on g3 is dropping. So once again, for the millionth time, for the millionth time, we're already here. Takes, takes, here, here, c takes on b3, takes, here. King e2 could be a move. Yeah, to protect the rook. It could be a move. I'm not going to argue. But even here, I mean, queen g3 is a move, but how about bishop d4? This is also a very reasonable move. Threatening queen e3, let's say knight f1. Oh, wait, then I just take the rook here. It's just crushing. And uh, after rook e3, rook e3, king g2, we already discussed this. There's queen f4 with the threat of rook g3. The queen on d2 is dropping. There's no defense. Uh, the time, I think she has about seven minutes. Seven minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Martenburg. Martenburg, sorry. Yeah, she checked the clock. She knows. She knows her time management is not ideal. Could it be that she does not see C takes on B3? That she doesn't see this resource? Maybe it's not so obvious that the queen on C7 is instrumental to go after the pawn on C3. Oh, wow, h5. Oh, my goodness. h5, Dina, what are you doing? h5. No, 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 no. This is, this is not how you should be playing. Why not 93? The only conclusion I can come up is that she simply missed c takes on b3 this is the move which evaded her attention once again 93 takes takes here oh sorry what 93 i'm part of me you know I'm, it's getting late here <laughs> rookie three yes rookie three takes takes here i think somehow the c takes on b3 simply evaded her attention that the queen on c7 hits the pawn on c3 there's no other explanation because Dina is very sharp. She sees these tr tricks very easily. Like what happens after King G2, Queen F4, that Queen on D2 is under attack. I'm sure she saw this. And now she plays H5. That's a move I really don't like. 
So 9G4, H takes on G4, and King G2. Suddenly the White King is feeling more or less safe. Let's say 96 and Rook F1. Where's your attack, Dina? Black is consult. I'm sorry, white is consolidating his position. Uh oh. And I'm sure that also Matthew is surprised. How come she didn't play rookie three? He's definitely surprised. So knight g4 is gonna follow. F takes on g4 doesn't make a lot of sense to open up the bishop. So most likely h takes on g4, king g2. And now what? Yeah, I know, you know, I've been in this situation many times. And this is the moment when you can have some regrets. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I'm sitting here and thinking, maybe I should have played rookie one. Maybe I should have played rookie one. Why did that I not play rookie one? Yeah, sometimes the players are so hard on themselves and they're thinking about the missed choices that, uh, that were done, that were not used in the game. But Dina is going to tell you everything about it after the game. Yeah, so h5 is a miss. Knight g4 is going to follow. At the moment, I think that White simply has to recover from the small surprise because I think he expected Rook E3 to follow. So let's say 96. Could it be the dealer missed from afar Rook F1? Because after bishop e3, I could easily imagine there's some, some nice jump with the knight. Like knight g5, hit the rook uh, with the rook, knight f3, something. I could imagine this. And after knight e2, I have the same idea. Like, again, there's knight g5, hit the knight on e2. Could it be that she, again, missed something from afar and she missed rook f1? I mean, the game is obviously continuing. I already thought it's going to be over. And now it suddenly starts from scratch. Knight g4 is an obvious move. I mean, this is why he played knight h2 in the first place. Modnar suggests that Dina spent all her time on rook e3 and knight e3 and didn't think too much on h5. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. This is very common. So you're thinking for the follow-up. She was trying to make work rook e3. There was something that she did not like. Or knight e3. There was something that she did not like. And then, I think, at the last moment, she decided to play h5. This is typical. This is typical how often players are thinking about. Because h5 is something you don't want to play. It feels just slow. The round three is in three hours. So let's once again uh, go to the uh, tournament. Schedule a uh, look like look what it looks like. There you go. This is the tournament schedule, as you can see. This is round two. Uh, these are Eastern Standard Times. Uh, round two, it started at 10:30 a.m. So the next round is 4 p.m., which is here in Latvia. I think in four hours, if I'm not terribly mistaken. 
I'll be long sleeping already. <laughs> While you'll be watching Dina's next game, I'll be long sleeping. It's 2 p.m. Eastern Time. In two hours? Is it in two hours? Really? Okay. Okay. Then I'm wrong. 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Yeah, you have to pardon me because here it's 9 p.m. It's 9 p.m. here in Riga. So 9 p.m. Yeah, you're right. Seven hour difference. Seven hour difference between Riga and Charlotte. Yes, of course. 9G4 followed. There was nothing else that could have happened. H takes on G4. I mean, you got to do this. Unless Dina is thinking about pushing for the H pawn. F takes H4 something. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Here, here. You know, and the bar says actually it feels pretty much all right. Maybe we can somehow use the open F file. Like Bishop H6? And something like this. And this, and this. Okay, what on earth is this even? F takes on G4 is played. All right, look at that. This is a move I didn't consider because I thought that the pawn on G6 is really weak. But maybe, maybe there's something here. For example, 96, rook F1. And bishop h6 or rook f8. Wait a second. I didn't consider this. So if we play something like rook f8, there's going to be f5. Oh, yeah. Okay, this looks pretty, pretty nasty. So let's try to play bishop h6. Hit this pawn. Bishop g6. The bar hates it. Takes. Here. Here. And some rook e3. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> All right. We are going to find it out very quickly. Maybe it still somehow works. Because look at this. I mean, King G2, 96, Rook F1. I think these moves will follow. Here. Bishop G6. Knight F4. Okay, where's the, where's the killing blow? Just a second. Let me, let me spend some time here. It's very difficult to navigate this complex position. In a matter of seconds. Rook e2 after queen f2. Unfortunately, the knight on g3 is guarding the e2 square. If I try to force things, can I do this? And give you a check. I feels it feels very very good here. The queen is under attack, by the way. Queen g3, king g3. Maybe this is winning.
And the bishop has major difficulties to be protected. And rook f3 is incoming. This could be. This could be something. So queen d6 happened. What? Queen d6? Why? I think that Dina is confused right now. Wait, wh why are you playing this? So Queen D6, she protects the pot on G6, but this loses valuable time. Oh no. So she wants to play Knight E6, Bishop H6, Rook F8, but this loses the valuable time. And I think that this Knight E6, Bishop H6, it deserved very serious attention. I don't like this. I mean, she's got to feel that this is not, not strong enough. Maybe she wants indeed to triple up at the E-file, but I mean, okay, Rook F1, I think it's going to follow. Just an easy move to get the Rook closer to the defense. And the problem is she cannot play Knight E6 anymore because there's going to be Bishop G6. This is a big problem. And now it just feels much slower. So maybe bishop h6? Oh. I mean, still, black strat is 96, 94, but this is a position which fell to be close to winning a couple of moves ago. And now I'm afraid that Dina is the one who is making two mistakes in a row. Unfortunately, I mean, just as you have committed the first mistake, the chances you're going to make the next mistake, they increase dramatically. Yeah, her body language... Uh, it says that she knows she has misplayed it. Maybe she doesn't know yet for sure. Where was the mistake? But the feelings are there. So it was, I guess, this moment, h5. F takes here, queen d6. Yeah, queen d6 is too slow. Yeah, she has 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Maybe she wants to put the queen on f6 and pay, play h4, but this could be a bit too slow. So let's say rook f1. Let's try queen f6, make work with, with h4 idea. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing the bar just as I am. The bar hates it. Probably because of a five. No, not because of a five. <laughs> uh. All right, we are getting to the most interesting part of the game because also a white is getting closer to the time scramble. Still everyone's game. And even though you are seeing the bar giving white some advantage, this is still a very sharp position and Dina is the better sharp player. She is the better player. So I'm sure that she's still going to do well. 
but it's been a roller coaster in a moment where it shouldn't have been. Whoa, F5. F5 and the bar jumps back. Yes, this is the bay of the crazy bar swings. That's on the wrong. F5 feels slightly emotional move because I think this rook a1 had to be brought to the game. Now White's idea is to take on g6 and get the pawn on h5. If Dina wants to do something, she needs to do something right now. Right now. So what is it? Queen f6 with the idea to give a check on f3. This makes a lot of sense. I think it's a bit slow. G takes to f5, by the way. I don't think this is a move we should completely disregard because after knight f5, there's rookie to check. I briefly checked what the engine says. Engine says queen f6 is strictly the only move. Queen f6, rook f1, h4, f takes on g3, uh, g6, <laughs> h3 check. Oh my goodness, King H2, rookie to check on black wins, queen of six is on the board, 90 to queen of one, how about that, oh wait, not queen of one, what, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, Rookie to check, queen e to queen d6. This is, this is nuts. How do you even spot this? Holy moly. I mean, this king is getting checkmated. I thought it's queen f1. Jesus. So queen f1 actually would lose because of knight g3 and there's no follow-up. I'm just using the engine here. You know, it's very easy to switch on an engine and say this is how it should be done but queen f6 is the step in the right direction rook f1 h4 i think she has to do this and then she should see that f x on g6 is a3 check here now the question is could she pick this up this is nuts i mean this is one of the most unusual made ideas i've ever seen takes check and queen d6 and after queen e5, you don't take with the bishop, you take with the queen. And this is when your fame is guaranteed for life. <laughs> if she would do this, I would just stand and applaud. Wow. One of the most unusual mates, if this ever happens. Queen f6 is the step in the right direction rook f1 is on the board now the question is is she gonna find h4 i think she's gonna do it she should find h4 because if she doesn't play this then why do you play queen f6 in the first place h4 should follow you know i have a theory dear viewers i think she did it for purpose she saw everything she saw that rook e3 93 whatever cdx b3 is winning she was thinking about you she was thinking, how do I make the most out of this? How do I make a proper content? This is going to be a content. For sure. I mean, on a serious note, this, this checkmate idea, h4, h3, rookie to queen d6, it's wild. I'm not sure she sees this. Very difficult to spot this. 
but she's very sharp. Let me tell you this. She sees tactical ideas like nobody else. And she's looking at the H pawn to go after the big daddy on G2. H4 is on the board. F takes on G6. We're approaching the culmination moment here. H3 check. This is a win for Dina. This is a win for Dina. H3 check. And this leads to a fascinating combination. Rook E2 takes it and not take the rook and F1. Oh my goodness. It's Rook E2 check and Queen D6. A total nut cause. I mean, forget the candidates. This is the game of the day. But she has little time on the clock. This could be tough to find. This could be really tough because after H3 check, you're thinking about rookie two, you're thinking about queen f1. Are you even looking in this direction of queen d6? That's the question. It's very difficult to find it. Two minutes. Rookie two check immediately. Rookie two check immediately. I suppose it works the same idea. After knight e2, h3. And after king g3 take on f1 and after king h2 still the same idea the question is does she see queen d6 check this is what i'm really curious wow what a move if this was a live broadcast if there was no delay because right now there's a delay for the moves i'm sure that rookie 2 would be a double exclam move Dina looked to the right, look to the d6 square. Once again, queen e2, no good. Rook e2, knight e2, check, h3, the rook and f1 falls. Knight e2, h3, check, probably king h2. I mean, rook h3 no, makes no sense. It just makes no sense. So king h2. Does she suspect that this is a potential mate threat? Is Dina looking at the d6 square? This is the critical square you should see. And from this angle, maybe it's actually not so difficult to find. Because queen d6 check, there's knight g3 or queen f4. So you just eliminate the knight and then you give it a check on d6. I'm not even sure if white sees the queen d6 check. Because I think he's about here. After knight e2, h3, king h2, he's suspecting that queen f1 looks winning. But then again, after knight g3, there is no follow up. Suddenly, white is very secure. It does look very scary. Queen f3, bishop d1, and white wins. There's no more follow up for black. I guess we are going to find it out in a moment because knight e2 is on the board. h3 check instantly followed by Dina. And now, this is the moment you have been waiting for. King h2, is Dina seeing rook takes on e2 or not? That's essentially the difference between a victory and a potential loss. The more time passes, the better the odds she's going to find it. So what we want to do here, we want Matthew to spend a lot of time on King H2. She's looking at something. She sees something. Come on, Dina, look to the right. Look to the D6 square. I guess she just noticed that after King H2, Queen of Wonders, 9 G3. Does she see? She sees the D6 square, I think. I think she sees the d6 square. Look at that. She's about, wow. She's like, oh my goodness. What am I doing here? I think she saw it. <laughs> I think she sees. 
Ah, she's trying to hide her gaze to D6 square. I think she sees. Because some of her body uh, language expressions. I don't know. I could be wrong. Because some of those expressions. I mean, you make them when you see something very exciting. King H2 is on the board. There you go. We are going to get our answer very quickly. Is she going to find one of the most exciting moves? One of the most exciting checkmates I have ever seen. Rook takes on E2 and Queen D6 to follow. This is a forced mate. Does she see this or not? Queen F1 is very tempting to take. Or is she going to pick up Rook E2 and Queen D6? Rook E2 is on the board. Unbelievable. You know, absolutely. I just... I stand up. And I applaud. Now that is the game. Now that is the game. And now Matthew is feeling a cold shower. What a game. And that's it. And that's it. And after Rook A2, Queen A2. Now he sees that there's Queen A6. A crazy checkmate idea. And to make things worse. <laughs> Black and sack waste. Black and take on e5 with a queen. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, queen e2, queen d6. This is the key idea. After queen e5, take on e5 and take with the bishop just for the content. And white is powerless with his two rooks and two bishops to stop the soul, soul attacking bishop. I mean, of course, you can take with the bishop, but this is just looking so nice. I knew it. She was doing all of this for the content. So, so rookie three was too easy. She had to go for something so beautiful as this. And this is why we like chess. I mean, very often, some of the most beautiful combinations, they are achieved through mistakes. Queenie toys on the board. What happened? Did he flag? He flagged. Queen e2, queen d6, queen e5. All right, he allows her to execute the move. No. No, he resigned. I think he flagged. Oh, come on, Dina. You don't take. You don't take with a bishop on e5. You take with a queen. I think he flagged. Dina wins. I don't know what they're discussing there. There you go. The black king on e5, white king on d4. This means 0, 1. This is the way you send the signal to the digital operator. It means black wins. And now they're discussing. Yeah, now they're discussing some things. Uh, I think we are going to get Dina for an interview. Just give it time. I think this was one of the coolest checkmates I've ever seen. This rookie two idea, absolutely insane. And I told you, she is very sharp. She sees these ideas. So she did not pick up maybe this idea of rookie three, ninety three, c six, and b three and queen c three. Instead, she saw this. Unbelievable. Yeah, so this was indeed very, very nice. She's smiling. She's very happy. She knows. She knows she played a beautiful game. Also, we have to thank for Matthew for playing a very interesting game, for not shying away from complications. Could have been a three result game at some point, but in the long run, Still, Dina proves why she was the favorite and why she was the better player. Will I ask Dina if she saw Queen D6? I will. 
I think that also what you could do is you could prepare your questions. So I'm going to ask her, of course, why she didn't play rook e3. I'm going to ask her if she saw queen d6 from the very beginning. Probably not. I think she wanted to play queen f1 at some point, and then she noticed rook e2, queen d6. So we are going to ask all of those things. <laughs> all right, at least it's uh, nice to see that um, Matthew is in good spirits. He knows he played a good game. He knows he was outplayed. A gentleman. All right. Now, I'm not sure what happens now. Uh... I don't know how much time it's going to take Dina to uh, get the camera. I probably also should prepare things. Like, try to... Maybe just a second, so that all of you can hear her. Maybe she's going to use the same camera. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, let's see. Okay. She has turned on the camera. Um, let's see. Maybe I can switch on the... Earphones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give her a moment. You wonder what Kravnik thinks of this. I am sure that even Kravnik would appreciate the beauty of this checkmate. Indeed, she played like a true magician. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, dear viewers, for the kind words. Uh, by the way, um, when we are going to finish, I think I'm going to mention it again that, oh, there you go. I think she's, where's she, by the way? Oh, she left the meeting. Why did she leave the meeting? Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Let me check a couple of things, maybe. She has posted something. Let me write to her. Do, 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 do. All right. I just uh, texted her. Oh, let's just wait. <clears throat> Might be a new link incoming on Discord. Senti says, okay. All right. And I'm leaving this. Meeting. All right. Let's just wait. Let's just wait and think about questions we could ask her.
The next round starts in... Nine minutes? Is it? In about 90 minutes. Right. While you're waiting for Dina, you have to look at me. No, I, will, I won't commentate the second game. I don't know who is the host. I will be back tomorrow. Yes. I don't know who is going to do the commentary for the uh, third round. Maybe Santi knows. I, I don't know. You like my trophies? Yes, I can. Look at that. I mean, a lot of them. Yeah, Dina says she's coming. Just give it a couple of minutes. They're not 3D printed copies, uh, trophies. <laughs> They're real. I started to play chess myself at age nine. Uh, became a grandmaster rather late at 29. I was not playing really chess for a long time, something like seven years. Got EM rather quickly, but I, I quit playing chess just because I thought, I don't want to do this. My favorite trophy is probably the biggest trophy. The bigger, the better. Size matters. My favorite drink is coffee. Yeah, so by the way, uh, maybe my YouTube viewers are wondering who I'm answering to. I'm answering to... So the questions from Twitch viewers. I'm also trying not to neglect you, dear viewers, from YouTube. Uh, maybe you can come up with some interesting questions to Dina. Um, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to relay it to Dina. I'm sure she's going to be very excited about the game. But also we have to take into account that there is the next game in... 90 minutes so she needs to take some rest but we already know that dina is like a terminator terminators don't need rest really oh discord you got it what Discord? Oh, there's Discord. Got it. I 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 got it. What? Um, just a second. There's some confusion. Dina is ready to meet, ready to say hello to all of you. She's even watching us. We are going to get there. I can't open your Zoom link, Dina. You have sent me a fake link. All right, let's give it another try. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is better. <clears throat> oh, just a second. Let me switch. Just a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Oh, no. Just a second, Dina. I don't see you yet moment no worries no worries i'm here there we go hello everybody 
Hey, Dina. Um, I, um, I was planning to win like in two hours or whatever, but then I was like, I should probably play the best way. And then I was like, I hated myself for spending all my time. I was looking at this very cute move. Um, take on b3 instead of um, h5. Take on b3, and if bishop takes, then rook e3. Wait a second. Can I, can I go back maybe on the screen? Yeah, so I'm going to put it. Instead of h5, you're saying uh, take on b3. Yeah. But why you did not consider rook e3? No, Arthur, I was spending, I thought for 20 minutes. What do you think I was thinking about? <laughs> I'm sure you saw it. Yeah, I was calculating rookie three, but there was something I didn't like about it. Like if they take everything yes. and then I take on b3, they go bishop d3. And it's like, I have two rooks and the e is down. Like, ah, the bishop d3. Yeah. Okay, and after Queen C three ninety two, this is what you didn't like. We didn't discuss this. Yeah, I didn't like it. So I thought, what if first maybe I take on B three, Bishop takes, and then Rook E three. But again, I was like, well, what if he just like, yeah, I, I just started kind of seeing ghosts there. Probably he takes on B three, but it's like Bishop can always take on D five if they just go King G two. But probably it's winning anyway. Right. So did you decide like to play h5 at the last moment or this was always no your... no no h5 was my was my first candidate okay but another candidate was just to like play bishop h6 but i couldn't see anything concrete anywhere like bishop h6 like this is crazy to bring the king to g4 right but what if he still does it takes on g4 pawn takes king g4 and i in the, in the moment i don't see like even bishop f4 queen f4 like whatever like uh h5 knight takes h5 pawn takes h5 rook h5 i like i just i don't see i don't see anything like like winning there so like obviously by intuition like everything must be winning but how to do it concrete i couldn't find so i decided like uh, let's take less risk possible and play h5 because i just couldn't find anything concrete right but uh, I, I have a question. Uh, did you consider, I'm sure you considered, instead of, uh, where was this? Um, instead of queen c7 and 98, you had a long think. Did you consider rookie you want to give up two rooks for the queen and then play queen f5? No, this one, I I mean, I, I saw like rookie one and two rooks, but I didn't analyze it. I, I didn't like, I saw it as a candidate, but I didn't analyze it at all because like my intuition like, wasn't like wouldn't wasn't looking into that direction and thank you Borting, for the raid mm -hmm. all right so can you maybe walk us through what happened in those uh final minutes because uh, i i did not see to be honest uh, your idea that you're gonna take on on g4 with f4 i thought you're gonna take with h4 but then again f takes on g4 king g2 makes a lot of sense uh queen d6 i did not like this move but then again uh somehow it worked maybe you can tell us a bit more what happened here yeah so basically i uh i started obviously with the time pressure and because i couldn't find anything concrete i started seeing ghosts so for example i didn't want to put myself into headache of if i go bishop h6 there is bishop takes g6 i take on f4 like queen uh like moves somewhere and then like i couldn't like or like even rook f1 and then i still like cannot like if knight e6 there is bishop e3 so i kind of still have to go be queen d6 anyway so i thought like uh yeah i thought just play queen d6 i mean i was getting low on time and i like i just couldn't find the, the you know the final concrete blow so i decided just to go there and like i thought like i actually saw this idea only in the end unfortunately but um, initially i was just gonna take on f1 with a queen and then I saw oh my god it's a checkmate like for those reasons I should probably start with h3 and then go rook e2 it's more precise because he doesn't have king g3 but in general yeah queen d6 more was like more like prophylactics I didn't believe in f5 but I didn't calculate it I only calculated when he played it and then I saw this nice 
we have six h4 rookie two i mean i think we even caught this moment on the on the camera because uh, when you play this h3 you like made a couple of expressions that i had a feeling that this is the moment when you saw queen d6 yeah i saw queen d6 only when he started thinking when okay. he started thinking on when i already played h3 i actually saw it very late yeah, um, i had a feeling it's yeah, had he played like really fast King H2, I probably would just take the rook on F1. But at the same time, I hope that it's winning anyway because his pieces are so locked. Like he would play like Queen F1, Knight G3. I go Queen F3. I don't know. Maybe he has like Bishop D1. I mean, I don't know. Angel says it's winning for white. <laughs> so oh, it's, yes, really? yes, it's easy. It's easy to switch on the engine and say that it's winning for white. So you, what you did is the only win. It's only rookie two, and only that. Man, so yeah, uh, yeah. This C chess, like this is what I call C chess. C chat. This is what I call luck in chess because I, I actually really didn't see it until the end. So it's like I don't know how much it is deserved. At the same time. It's like, I hate that I, like, position, like, I mean, again, like, Arthur, I can't, I, in that position, I could not, not take on G4. But at the same time, I didn't see anything concrete. I didn't want to burn my time. But at the end, I started burning my time because I wanted to find something concrete. Because, like, like how many moves, like, should I stay there with a the piece up? I mean, okay, it's a positional sacrifice, but it's also an attack. So, um, it's like, I feel like somewhere, it's like, either just, play faster i don't know maybe queen c7 was unnecessary maybe just right away like knight b1 knight d7 knight b8 knight d7 knight f6 i, I don't know i mean i, I had a feeling i had a feeling that you were deciding between rookie one and queen c7 knight b8 because this was like my two choices either you go for the slow attack or you try to finish the opponent immediately but yeah it was not obvious choice yeah, but at the same time, like, bishop g4 must be correct, right? Yeah, it's totally correct. Yeah, I was totally sure you were going to do this, like, in a couple of minutes, and you did it. Yeah, it's it's totally yeah, correct. Yeah, I was just, like, I was I was kind of, like, I didn't do it right away because I was shocked, like, why it's not concrete. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just a positional piece sacrifice and long-term attack. Yeah. But I guess it was, what was hard is, like, to wonder, to, like, to make a decision, like, is it like, am I missing something concrete or is it just like long term? And I was like, I kept, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I kind of like, I wanted this game to be clean and I don't think it was clean just because I like, yeah. But you I know, it was I, a true masterpiece because I think it was worth it. If you had played rookie three and all the sequence with CDX on B3 that you said you're not sure, uh, uh, maybe you had won it, would have been just a victory, but instead you made a mistake, supposedly, but it's led to this very beautiful checkmate. I think it was Yeah. Wonderful. That's crazy. I'm trying to find um, the game to see... Um... It's on chess.com. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just yeah. um... events. Okay, here I have it. Let me see. Uh, so... Yeah, I should have. It's more precise to start with H3. But okay, I didn't see it. H3, oh, you're talking H3. about the very finish, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I was going to, if he played, had he played really fast King H2, I, with two minutes on the clock, probably would have taken on F1 and then Knight G3. And then like, oh my God, plus five. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I also started hating myself because like, I don't have to play like h i don't have to play i thought like maybe on f takes g3 i can just play queen d6 oh uh, no not queen d6 sorry h3 h3 king h2 and now i don't have to sacrifice the queen oh yeah computer says it's the only way i thought maybe queen d6 but threatening rookie too but he just go wow oh my god yeah i don't know arthur i don't know i don't feel like it's like no but th this was perfect uh, I think it was perfect game for the contest, you know, it was unbelievable. I mean, you had him on the ropes at the very beginning, you let him slip, and then you did it again, and you did it in great style. I think it's totally worth it. This is why we play chess, Dina, no? Yeah.
Yeah, I guess. I agree. I, I hate when in um like in a kind of like huge advantage winning position, I hate that I let it to be the only way. The only way I feel like it's always slippery, you know? Like I always want to touch games. I always want to have like five different ways. Mm -hmm. Because the only way it feels like, like, yeah. But that moment when I sacrifice the queen, c takes, and then bishop d3, like, bro, okay, b2, rook b1. And then, like, if I take on c3, knight e2, like, what do you want me to do? I'm looking at this and I don't understand. I don't see concrete win. Uh, so M let me go back. Yeah, let me go back to this. You said yeah. after knight h2, rook e3, yes? This moment. Um, takes, takes, c It's takes. like when I, yeah, when I'm rook e3, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, computer says black is minus two, but. No, you're right. We didn't see this. We didn't see this at all because I also considered only bishop takes on b3. But uh, now that you say that knight e2 is there to defend everything, uh, yeah, it could be still very tricky. I guess you were not looking at the engine. Yeah, you were trying to analyze no, I was it not. just yourself. I was not. I mean, I did. Yeah. I did click it a couple of times because sometimes I was getting clueless what's happening, and and I had a peek. Yeah, what the engine is saying, but mostly no. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, okay. No, Chad, it's not like, I'm not like harsh, harsh on myself. Probably it's my perfectionist side, but like, you don't want to like, you know, it's like, literally I'm telling you, had he played King H2 fast, he just started thinking like, why is he thinking? And I have it very often in my, in my games. Like it's a very common, like, you know, chess is a lot of psychology. When you think your opponent has only moved and then all of a sudden he starts thinking, it means that for sure you're missing something. I'm like, okay, what are the options? Why is he thinking? And then I'm starting like, am I missing something? Like, oh my god, isn't that a made night net? So yeah. Yeah, that was that was very nice. That was very nice. Yeah. Also, your chat is yeah. You're saying that your chat is saying that you're not you're being too harsh on yourself. You played the masterpiece with some mistakes, but uh, it was very very enjoyable, and uh, the chat was really rooting for you. Very happy. That you found this beautiful mate. Uh, the final question, though, Dina, um, about uh, this entire beautiful combination. After rook e2, a3, uh, rook e2, and queen d6, if he had like queen e5, how would bishop you e5. Have... Bishop e5. Oh, you think queen takes f5? I didn't see it. Sorry, Arthur. Yeah, you're right. It's beautiful. It's oh, it's more beautiful. Oh, it's my God. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I uh, thought. I'm... Oh, no. Oh, no. Why did you tell me that? <laughs> I'm sure you would have found it. You would have found it. It's the same. Oh my god! I was gonna take with the bishop. I I was gonna take with the bishop. Yeah, no. Oh my god. It doesn't matter. It still leads to a mate, doesn't it? I should have told yeah, you that. Yeah, it's crazy. 98 is. I'm shocked that 98 is the first line because I also considered 98, but I didn't want to deviate my knight too far away from. Um. Here, like, because yeah. like. Knight B8 because Knight B8 is super positional. You know the Karakan idea. Knight B8, Knight D7, Knight C6. Mm -hmm. It's super deep. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was very nice. You know, I was also super impressed. You found this beautiful move, Queen B6, uh, at the very beginning. This opening phase. This is when your opponent completely panicked. Because in the beginning, oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel this move at all. I didn't see this at all. But yeah, that was a very nice find, uh, hitting the pawn on b2 and f takes on e5. And this is when your opponent just started to go completely wrong. Yeah, although Arthur, you know, like that my this was my idea c4. Like I wouldn't play c4 if I wasn't gonna play. Like c4 was with the idea queen b6. But I, I again, like engine. Is so annoying. Why engine gives plus one point six to white? Because it's engine. I mean, who cares? Engine gives up the pawn on B two and says, "Chill, everything is good." So yeah, you know, like this is actually interesting. I never go for B two pawns usually in Cairo, and I never like even attack them because, or I fake attack them. Like I pretend that I want to take it, but I really don't really want to take it because I know that it's white always has compensation for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so engine says knight f1, queen b2, and yeah, just say, wait, okay, this is a low, low, low depth engine here, Dina, because now oh, it's yeah, a, true. 
Girl. Yeah, it's depth 19. So maybe it's and in the opening, like I can, I don't know if like H five is on H three is probably too weak. So I thought like let him play G four, and I'll just like uh break the center like after the finishing development. And what was your so... thought process for phase six? Why do you do this just to throw your opponent out of the preparation? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's like preparation, but also like even if it's like, see, either here in the storm pairings are online only like thirty minutes before the game, so they don't, they never have a, like um really time to prepare. But maybe like in general, he has something against like for sure against like he has some like plan for this line and like just make them start thinking on their own and it's so easy like whenever you know plans and ideas i love you know playing some somewhere g6 somewhere a6 like even like for example you know like in this like this super sharp line with um bishop f5 move number three g4 or yeah. no they go h4 they go so the main line is h5 and i have my files there but whatever i play against low rate opponents i can go a6 queen b6 queen c7 and i would like always win because like they just like kind of get out of the prep you make them think on their own and then you know the plans of Kara, and they just like mess it up completely mm -hmm. so you so, just yeah, revealed the, a big secret right there yeah but you know what arthur i i really i, I don't think like watching like every stream for five hours looking for my secrets i mean <laughs> come on it's like even even hikaru's recaps don't expo explode his really explode his secrets like all right all right uh, yeah, good is... luck watching all my streams you know and yeah this was this was the, this is the best nice. way of spending your time yeah see arthur yeah probably there is not so much yeah oh my god i was right so um remember when i played queen d6 so actually, if I play bishop h6, I was afraid of bishop g6, and that's correct. Bishop g6 and white is better. So indeed, queen d6 kind of like makes sense. And then knight e6, they, yeah, rook f1, so... No, but my... I think it's first knight e6, Dina. First knight e6, then oh, bishop yeah. h6. But then bishop e3. Ah, I, I thought there's going to be some knight jump, like knight g5 something. No, I jump, but they take and they attack the bishop. Yeah, knight g five. I see what you mean. Knight g five, bishop g six. Come on, yeah, it's it's crazy. But a computer says knight f eight prophylactics protect, and now we're equal. And bishop back to g one. But I thought, yeah, and now queen d six position is equal. Man, you know the reason I didn't. I wanted to say the reason I didn't. I wasn't gonna take with h pawn is because I didn't want to open his rook. Yeah, I see. Yeah, this was very so, nice. Very nice find. F takes with uh, with all kinds of knight uh, knight e six, bishop h six. Yeah, you even found queen d six, queen h six, h four. How you say? No, no. What I'm saying is that I'm I was originally considering only h takes on g six because somehow I felt that opening this bishop on c two is too dangerous. But yeah, I mean, yeah, f, f takes on g six was very nice. By the way, yeah. I have a question from the chat. I mean. I think it was Dan who was asking, and not only him, but some other viewers as well. Were you sure that you were playing against right uh, Matthew Simmons? Because there were two of them, apparently. And uh, chess.com has the rating of the wrong guy. Oh. Oh, because this one is from England or what? I don't know. Jer Jersey. Jersey, yeah. I have no idea. Um, but he's rating Canada wrong. Yeah, some candidate master from Jersey. Yeah, that's not him. That's not him. This I, I'm this guy's yeah, yeah, you're right. I was playing against another guy. Uh well it doesn't probably matter. I think yeah, in the report they, they have the right guy in like, no, I mean it, it does matter guy. against the guy you prepared your game. Say again? Maybe you prepared against wrong Matthew. Arthur, here in this tournament, pairings are 30 minutes before the game. Right, I, right. The only the only time that I, the, the only thing that I can do in this 30 minutes is to send you the email, the my photo for the uh, for the starting soon. That's all I can do in this 30 minutes. <laughs> Barely set up my camera. And now you have something like one hour until the next round. Yeah, yeah but the pairings, again, are going to be only 30 minutes before. Yeah. 
And so, well, yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some food and and post post the reel. <laughs> no, but so seriously, I thank you so much for jumping on this. Um, how um, how how did it go for you? Was it smooth? Oh, it was very smooth. Yes, I mean, chat was very friendly and really cheering for you and. Uh, super excited uh, this was essentially the game of the day and not the candidate because very beautiful uh, checkmate idea and yeah so we had we had a raid i believe from samai somebody said on youtube i i did not see oh my god artur don't believe everything you no? see on the internet it's a two-year I, I old i can't i can't trust it. youtube there are a raid doesn't exist on youtube really? that's no such the raid oh on youtube goodness. yes Come on. Shame on you, you, whoever wrote this. I trusted no, it's, you. It's an old joke, but I also felt for this when I was on the boat as live. I also felt this. this is super old to your joke. YouTube, how dare you? How dare you are uh, pranking our grandmaster? I mean, how should Look I know? You. I mean, I'm not streaming on YouTube, so I don't know. Shame on you. Shame <laughs> on you, YouTube. It's like, this is how you treat our host? <laughs> All right, Arthur, before we go, who's yeah. going to win the candidates? Who's going to win the candidates? I don't know. I, I would love to go with the opinion that Gukesh, but I am afraid that he's not experienced enough. So a good bet would be Hikaru. I didn't believe he's going to make it. I didn't believe it at the very beginning, especially after his disaster start. But he's proven me wrong. He's a fighter. Yeah, he's my guy. I'm going to post another reel about him. All right, Chavo, we're going to be back soon, basically in one hour. So, um... oh, okay, I'll try to rest a bit. Yeah, try to rest. Uh, what, uh, final, final question, uh, Dina. Were you drinking tea or coffee? This is very important. Well, I was drinking my two. I'm on double. At first, I had double cappuccino, and then I did my big tea. So, yeah, I'm good. Tea. You got it. <laughs> All right, take, take yeah. some rest, Dina, and get ready for the next round, all right? Okay, so we're going to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, for round four. So I wish you best of luck. Go crush them. And uh, Sounds good. Thank you very much, Arthur. Thank you, Chad. We're going to be back in, like, what? In, in one hour, so don't go anywhere. Just just get some refreshments and, and see you again very soon, guys. All right, all right. Okay, Dina. Also... Yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna read from the chat. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna read. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'm gonna uh, finish the stream, and you can read. Yeah, because I don't think I can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are you. You're not gonna continue, right? It's late for you. No, it's not. It's not really so late. I mean, uh, just Dojo has asked me if I could join them for something like one hour and say something about the candidates, but I I don't think I'm gonna be there for long. So I, I'm asking because if you will continue to stream from your channel, then we can raid you. No, no, no not from my channel. I mean, maybe, oh, okay. I'm, maybe I'm going to pop in for a moment at just dojos uh, for the candidates. All right. Just all say right. some well, words. Guys, okay, well, I'm gonna, we're going to raid just dojos then. Are they streaming? I'm not sure. Are they not streaming? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, they should be, right? They're one of my favorite channels. Oh, are they? Uh, oh, definitely. Definitely, yeah, they are. Because uh, they're the guys who are focusing on um, uh, chess education. So I'm, I'm uh, considering myself also a small-time streamer who is focusing on education. Yeah, they're re they're live. Well, okay, Arthur, I totally understand you. I actually now just switch to the educational content as well, and just mm -hmm. open my school, my Russian chess school. I, so I, um, I read it. Yes, it's nice. Yeah. So I am super happy to support this and I'm gonna raid Chaz Dojo live. So right. everybody, shortly Arthur is gonna be there. Uh, yeah, give me like, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes pause. Maybe they're gonna accept me. I have a Zoom link to join it, so. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much, Arthur. See, See you, you tomorrow. tomorrow, Dina. Yep, good luck. Bye-bye. Good luck in round three. Thank bye. you, bye. All right, uh, so Dina is, I believe, raiding. I have nothing else to say. Um, there you go, there's the raid.
if I could maybe also raid my channel. Let me see if I can do it. So thank you again, everybody who was watching. I'll be back tomorrow. In a moment, I'm probably going to join Chess Dojos for a short commentary. Tell my thoughts. And have a great day. Bye-bye. I guess I'm still here. All right.